Hello and welcome to the 80th episode of Pat Bear's Anime Club. That's right, 8 0. Um, uh, that's weird that I've done this for so long, but here we are. This is my summer 2022 wrap up and my fall 2022 preview. We are towards the end of the summer season. There's still, at the time of this recording, and I'll say that probably a couple times at the time of this recording, there are still a few episodes left in a few shows. We are not done with all of these, uh, uh, but we are very close to it. And let's be real, the summer season, not the strongest season. Um, it couldn't have been compared to the spring and winter of this year, but also the fall season's looking pretty great. So we will go through all of the shows. I'm using anychart.net here going through all of the summer shows um there will be some that i'll kind of be like i didn't watch this and this is why and there'll be some that i'm like i didn't watch this oops uh in the chat the folks who are watching live if you have any thoughts of any of the shows i'll be covering here you can always leave those um uh, messages in there and i will uh call them out and read them um uh, i didn't really watch anything this summer but fall is stacked uh says uh Trifos. Uh, and then uh, Shags Magoo says Team Lupin checking in, which I appreciate. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, for checking in, Team Lupin. We do we do love that uh, here. We are pro Lupin here. Um, uh, and yeah, so I'll, I'll talk. Look, maybe maybe uh, Tripos, there's going to be something I'll describe today uh, in this video that will pique your interest that you'll go, Oh, that sounds like something I should catch up on. And also, yeah, the fall season is stacked. Even if you only like one kind of show, there's a lot of every kind of show coming up. So, uh, we'll get into that, uh, now, um, by talking about a show that I did not watch, uh, because it was not available anywhere. You can always check to see, uh, the, there's a YouTube channel, but that YouTube is just promotional. It's not the actual episodes because sometimes stuff does show up just on YouTube if it's like a web-based thing. Um, and sometimes those are available for everybody, but that's just a promotional website uh, for it. And it's a psychological show about a five-year-old, a 14-year-old, a 17-year-old um, that find that button. To, and it is based on the cult classic story, um, a 500 million year button. Uh and I did not watch it because it was not easily available uh, here uh, where I'm at. So didn't check that one out. Um, and it's always weird to start off with a show that I didn't watch, but I am going through alphabetical order. So we start with numbers. Uh, and then we get to Black Summoner, uh, which I am watching. I have read the manga uh, of this series. It's an isekai. Uh, that's a hell of a trolley problem. Yes, indeed, Proto Q. Um, the, uh, the... You win this, then you have to spend 500 million years in a completely empty space, but then you you don't remember it. Okay, and you get money, but you, but you have to live that life, but then you won't remember it. It's a lot. Might be an interesting show. I have no idea. Um, Black Summoner, though. Getting into Black Summoner. So, uh, I should say this, Annie Chart, I don't, I never look at their ratings if people like shows, if people don't like shows, where it's ranked on Annie Chart. Uh, that never appeals to me. I usually go in looking for shows because I have heard something about them from other people. Uh, you know, I have friends that watch a lot of anime and read a lot of manga and read light novels that I don't get around to. Um, but then also, if it's an isekai, with some exceptions... If it's an isekai, I'm going to check it out because I like that subgenre. So I watched Black Summoner and I like it a lot. Do I wish that the armored knight in the show, uh, uh, right over here, do I wish that he was done in uh, a digital animation instead of CG? Yes, I do. Uh, but that's like kind of the only thing about it that, that bums me out. I love the idea of a battle maniac that is offered the chance to reincarnate. And he's like, sounds great. My one condition, wipe my memories in order to give me more abilities. Uh, also, you, the goddess, I'm in love with you. So just want you to know that. Convinces the goddess to give him a bunch of powers. He loses his memory, but who cares? Most of most isekai, if we're clear, most isekai are about the now than the past. Now, there are some that are rooted in your previous life and the regrets of those lives. But there's very there's very few that are like, 
there are some people that are looking for a way home, but most isekai, modern isekai right now, are the are in the series of I'm in a fantasy world, fuck yeah. Not the I'm in a fantasy world, I gotta get back home. Like I said, that's the modern isekai right now kind of takes away that like regret because it it's pathos that a lot of these things can't handle. Uh, so they don't try. Uh, Proto Cube says, I like Black Summoner too, but man, the behind almost every successful isekai protagonist is a woman with Stockholm Syndrome meme sure is true. Yeah, so if my biggest regret with the series is that one of the characters is CGI and it looks bad, that's a lie. That's hiding for my actual biggest issue with it is that it, it does feature the I have purchased you in order to save you and now you are indebted to me and now you're going to hang out and also be in love with me as a um, as a character development, as a character thing. Because the while wow, most of the characters in this show are summons, they are characters that have been defeated. Somehow the demon girl is a summon. I don't understand how that works, but she's a summon. Everybody's a summon except for the elf who was a slave that was under a curse and he purchased her and then removed her curse. So now she is indebted to him. Uh, and then also there's a, a girl that was reincarnated um, to be to basically because very unclear why it was the thing where like it's like, hey, you can you can uh, reincarnate people and you can summon reincarnations. And he's like, well, I guess I will. And it'll be a young lady who also now considers me to be her, her big brother. Um, that's a late season addition that is also really weird. It's it's complicated, but the fighting is well paced. Um, he's an overpowered main character, which I enjoy. I love the idea that he is stronger than the heroes, but he is just like, ah, there's heroes here. I'm, oh, they're not ready to take care of. Uh, the demon lord. Okay, well, I'll, I'll help them out. I like that. I, I do like the idea that uh, a main character that is obsessed with battle, uh, a battle junkie, I, I think that is fun. as a fun choice for um, isekai main characters who are often kind of milk toast. And we'll get to another milk toast one um, in a bit. Um, who is still fun, even though he is pretty milk toast. Um, okay, so. Call of the Night is the most beautiful show out this season. I will hold, I, uh, there may be others that have more beautiful moments, but from beginning of episode to end of episode, there are no better vibes. There is no more beautiful backgrounds and lighting in anime this season than Call of the Night. And I wish I liked the show. I so wish I liked it. Uh, it's gorgeous the the colors look in this fucking photo the colors of the night are so vivid the purples and blues and blacks are so uh, appealing it really does paint that setting of like this like gorgeous idea um of the fact that there is this wonderful world that only happens at night and you gotta be out in the city at night what are you doing? Why, are you, why aren't you sleeping during the day? Like, it paints such a beautiful picture of that. I, I, I see your uh, question. I will get to that in just a moment. Because um, I, I got a rant in me about Call of the Night. And it, so it's gorgeous, right? But it's also about, like, a high school boy that meets a vampire and wants to become a vampire. So he's going to force himself to fall in love with her. And then a young lady that is... A vampire looking to kill time, but also maybe looking for a connection with someone. And it's very high school angst. And maybe because it's, I'm 42, I just can't with high school angst in a multi-episode series. That I wish I liked this show, but I, I don't. I would say watch the trailer for it. Watch the opening uh, uh, you know, song. Watch the first episode maybe. It's beautiful and you should check it out. But uh, I don't think that it is uh, good because I don't think the source material is that good. I just go, hey, dude, you are in a terrible situation right now and your age is not an excuse for this terrible situation. Everyone involved in this thing should know better. What are we doing here? Um, 
Uh, so we had a question before I move on to our next thing. Uh, uh, you buy any uh, Witcher Mercury Gunpla yet? Yes, I have pre-ordered a Witcher Mercury Gunpla. Uh, I do not remember how to say the name of it. Uh, it's not the main one. Uh, it starts with an L, and I believe that it is uh, uh, Lith. L F I T H Lith. I, I pre-ordered the Lith Gundam because it looked rad. I do not know when that will arrive. Um, uh, from USA Gundam Store, but I did pre-order that because I was like, well, I should get a Witcher Mercury one. Uh, and I thought the design was cool. Um, so yeah, I pre-ordered that. And of course, when we get into the fall anime, we'll talk about um, Witcher Mercury and the prologue that, that is available that you can watch now if you want, which, no spoilers, is very good. But we'll get into talking about fall anime later because right now we're still talking about summer anime um, I, I don't, I have not watched Card Fighter Vanguard Will Plus Dress, which is the sequel to Card Fighter Vanguard Overdress. So first it was over, we were overdressed and now we're adding Will to dress. What does that mean? I don't know, but it's a card battling anime with three studios on its name, which is which means there is some CGI mixed with some digital animation, I'm sure. If you've got three studios working on a thing. Um, this sounds cute and I haven't watched it and it's on my, I should check this out list. Um, uh, 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 Chimimo, Chimimo uh, sounds like a cool idea. It's on High Dive, which I, I pay for, so I should go check it out. Um, Hell's Most Adorable Messenger. Uh, he's an average demon. And then he gets uh, into the a, a house with three sisters. And he's stuck there as like their roommate. Um, and that sounds cute. And I don't know anything about this. But it is a series that I'm like, why didn't I watch this? The 12th episode is airing this week. How come I didn't check out this this uh, particular anime? So it's one of those things where I'm like, um, this is going to be my like uh, check in. Like, did I miss it because like I looked at it before and I was like, oh, this this seems whatever. Or did I miss it and I'm like, oh shoot, I could have been talking about this all season and I could have been uh, telling other people to check it out. I don't know. Uh, we'll wait and see. I did not watch Classroom of the Elite season two. Because I stopped watching Classroom of the Elite Season 1 about halfway through. So we still have the 13th episode coming up now. Do I watch clips of this show? Yes. Because this show is the, um, uh, the slow burn of what if your main character had no emotions because of trauma and is awesome but only reveals he's awesome sometimes but is also a bastard and sucks. That's not a show I want to watch, but I will watch um, a scene where the person who is outwardly worse than him uh, gets his ass kicked by our main character because those are fun clips to watch on YouTube at like three in the morning. So I would say Classroom of the Elite Season 2, great clips on YouTube, but not necessarily a show that I want to see. People really like the, the manga. People really like the anime, I'm glad they do. Not for me. Um, Dropkick My Devil. I think this is the third season of Dropkick My Devil. I appre Yes, it's the third season of uh, uh, Jesse Chan Dropkick. Uh, I appreciate that this show, like their second season, I think they like raised money on a, on a, a, a crowdfunding and like Amazon Prime picked it up in Japan. Like, the, pe the people that want to make this show worked really hard to make this show. I don't find it that great, but I appreciate that it exists. It's very hard to, like, make something new and original. And I'm happy that exists, even if I don't necessarily think that it's particularly my thing. Uh, Duel Masters Win, which is the sequel to Duel Masters King Max. There's something about these, like, kids shows that might also be card game shows that um, have great names. Like, King Max is a great name. Duel Masters Win is a great name. I don't know anything about this. 
Um, Engage Kiss. Uh, I did not watch because the the synopsis of it. Uh, A1 Pictures, studio that I enjoy. Uh, they got some hits, they got some misses. I just kind of didn't want to watch an anime about a PMC. I, that That's just pretty much it. Like, the anime is set in Byron City, an artificial island city established outside of any country's jurisdiction in the Pacific o Ocean to exploit local natural resources. Okay? Uh, the mining of a new resource. Uh, you got D. Okay, so the mining of a new energy resource, Orgonium, has resulted in the outbreak of D disasters by demons in the city. Just call them disasters or call them demon disasters. Why are they called D disasters? Um, uh, it's just like, nah. Yeah, the guy runs a, you, you got this guy. He's like, oh man, I'm, I'm broke all the time. Good thing I got this lady that helps me out. Um, and then also my ex-girlfriend's around and she's like, you know, she's working where I used to work. And so it's a conflict between these people. And there's a, a nun that kicks people, I guess. And I was just like, no, nah, I'm good. I think I'm good. I don't think I have to watch a uh, engaged kiss. Maybe it's great. I'll never know. Uh, Extreme Hearts. I did not watch this. Um, again, well, so I'll say this. There are two genres that I don't watch a lot of in anime. Sports anime and idol anime, music anime. There, there are some great ones, right? There are some... Haikyuu is a fantastic anime. It's volleyball anime. I love it. Um, uh, Yomi, uh, Yomimishi Pedal is a sports anime, high school uh, distance uh, biking. Love that. Team biking. Um, and then, like... Zombieland Saga is incredible. That's a that that's an idol anime, right? But it's in, unbelievably great. So this is two of those genres smushed together. It is a musical sports anime. Uh, now, do I like the term hyper sports? Of course I do. Of course I think the term hyper sports rules. Um, but uh, no, nah, I think I'm good. Hey, remember a couple seasons ago where there was that girls hockey uh, anime, but also sometimes they were idols? <laughs> oh, boy. It's just like two great tastes that I'm not interested in. You know what I mean? Uh, but I this here's the thing. Like any show, Extreme Hearts is someone's favorite anime this season. And for them, I hope they obviously, I absolutely loved it. I hope they uh, they're psyched for the thirteenth, uh, the twelfth episode coming up. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so actually, uh, Jizzle, the, that's what I was talking about. Uh, Pride of Orange is the hockey anime with girls that sometimes they're also idols because that was to attract more audience to their hockey games. And I didn't watch any of it. And I don't know if it was a good idol show or a good sports show or or good both. But, like, it was very funny to be like, hey, you know that's an idol show, right? And they'd be like, wait, why? It's a girls' hockey show. Be like, no, 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 no. It's also an idol show. I don't know. Uh, I never saw it. Uh, another show I never saw is our next one, uh, which is Harem in the Labyrinth of Another World. Now, I said that I try to check out all the isekai that comes out, with some exceptions, and here is our exception. Um... So the translation of the manga title was not used. And the translation of the light novel um, uh, title was not used when Crunchyroll, for some reason, picked up this anime. So this isn't High Dive. This isn't like your smaller boutique streaming service that's still big and still owned by AMC, but isn't owned by Sony. No, Crunchyroll ran the... In another world to have sex with slaves anime. Because that's the word that's missing from this title that's in the light novel and the manga translation is slave harem in the labyrinth of another world. Because that's who that that uh, uh, demi-human is there in the photo. Now, if you take out the part of the anime and the story that is about 
having a slave to explore a labyrinth and then also have sex with, and you only focus on the exploring a labyrinth, and it's, there are some, the thing that sucks the most about this, no, the thing that sucks the most about it is, is the thing that it sucks, and it's the whole thing. The, another thing about it that isn't great is that its world building is interesting. I read some of the manga because I was like, fine. And then I was like, oh, no, actually, no, not fine. But like it's world building. It's ex it's a slow exploration of a labyrinth city. This guy is not trying to be a hero. He's just trying to survive and earn money. Now, unfortunately, part of him earning money is to have slaves to have sex with. And there's no good thing about that. But the slow approach of survival in a uh, in a labyrinth city is interesting and is wasted on this show. And why did Crunchyroll pick it up? Why isn't this a high dive show? Nothing, no disrespect to high dive, but high dive generally shows the most horny of horny shows. Um and usually pick up the shows that Crunchyroll and then uh, you know, formerly Funimation as well were like, no, 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 no. But no, Crunchyroll picked this one up. And I, you may be surprised to know that there are no clips of this show on their YouTube. Outside of the trailer uh, for the show, never a mention of this show existing as far as Crunchyroll is concerned. No need to promote this one, I guess. If you really want to watch this show, you already knew about it. And you're not mad that I was hating on it. But also you already watched it. You already checked out. You can't wait for 12 hours from now when you can watch the 12th episode of it. Um, is it wrong to try to pick up Girls in a Dungeon Season 4? Uh, man, what a, what a bummer of a decline of a series. Obviously, based on a light novel, right? You know by the title, is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? It's a light novel. This is not an isekai, despite all all seeming like it would be. It is just a fantasy uh, series uh, about a um, about a young man that dreams of being an adventurer, finding his way, overcoming the odds, uh, making a great group of friends that eventually become a family uh, uh, under a goddess, and like. Yeah, there's the young-looking goddess with the, with the bouncy boobs. And yeah, over the course of it, several women fall in love with this anime-ass anime protagonist, Belle. A hard-working, good young man with some hum plenty of humility. But um, the story just... It gets too much... At some point, we find out that, oh, wow, Belle is the chosen one. Belle didn't need to be the chosen one. Now, that's not the anime's fault. That's the, the creator's fault. That's the light novel fault. Um, but Belle didn't need to be the part of this epic big... If he was part of an epic big story, he didn't need to be like... Like, the backstory of Belle and how he was created and what he's doing there and what is expected of him is way too big for what this show needs to be. Um, there's also a whole savior complex thing that happens in a previous season and like some big questions about what it means to be, uh, to have like consciousness and be alive, uh, and all kinds of like, there's a whole thing about, uh, trying to free someone from slavery and, uh, and a whole thing about sex work and that like does not need to. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? Tackles a whole lot of shit that it can't handle and shouldn't have tried. Uh, so I did not watch season four. Um, uh, I hope people are enjoying it that have stuck with this series. I gave up during season two. I tried to get back in during season three. Haven't watched season four. Um, and this is a pretty much a repeat of what I said during season three. Uh, that is just like, oh, it's just, it's just in a weight class it does not belong in. Um, yes, yeah, 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 um, uh, there are a lot of good systems in this, and, like, interesting, and the idea of, like, look, the concept of, uh, the gods 
were interested in what was going on on this world and came down and left uh, Olympus to come down here. And so they like created families to, to support uh, the, the humans and the demi humans out there to like support them because they're just like, these kids are great. I got lots of fun with these kids. We're going to see what happens here. Like there's some interesting things about it, but like, nah, nah, I don't like where it went. Yeah. Um, also, uh, all the OV OAVs are very horny in, and some of them are terrible and some of them are like kind of fun, but they're all the OVAs are incredibly horny. Just an FYI. Uh, League of Night, League of Nations, Air Force, Aviation, Magic Band, Luminous Witches. This is an This is not based on a light novel. Somehow, this is not based on a light novel. League of Nations, Air Force, Aviation, Magic Band, Luminous Witches, is an idol show about. Is it girls that are planes? No, I think these are just girls. Um, yeah, it's basically like um. Uh, yeah, some, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's the, it's the USO tour based, the anime, basically. Uh, but also there are aliens. Uh, so like, I don't know. I didn't watch it. I, I, I don't hate the idea, but I didn't watch it. Um, Love Live Superstar season two, again, I'm not big on... I do like the cute girls doing things subgenre of anime. I enjoy those like, hey, we're a bunch of girls and we're into this thing. We'll talk about ones coming up later. But I didn't watch Love Live Superstar Season 2 because I'm not super big on idol shows. There's one idol show I watched some of this season. And we'll get to that because it had such a weird premise that I was like, ooh, I kind of want to watch this. But this is not... This is just Love Live. Like, if you like Love Live, you are already watching this. Um... Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, I was like, this sounds cool, kind of. But then I was like, ooh, Nas is not a good production studio. And then I heard that the animation is, like, awful, and I didn't end up watching it. Um, but yeah, I've heard nothing good about this at all. Um, you know, when you read the first line, a talking lizard asks for help, and it's like, uh... No. And then, yeah, and then, like, the enemy is a girl, and so he's just like, I guess I'm going to help you. I don't know anything about this other than it sounded bad, and then people told me directly, hey, also, this is bad. So I did not watch Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. Maybe it's great. If it is, I'm sorry. Uh, if it's fantastic, my apologies. But it did not, uh, did not stir anything in me. Uh, and then we have uh, Lucurious Recoil, um, which uh, I don't know if I would call this a comedy because I don't know if it knows that it's weird. I watched about five episodes of this. One of the characters shoots a gun where the bullets will go through like car doors. And then not, and then knock people out and not kill them, because she uses blanks, and that doesn't w make sense. And I guess you can't think about it. You can't think about these like young ladies that work at a cafe that also like solve big problems and big monsters problems and like nonsense problems with like you know groups of underground people, bad guys, and all kinds of nonsense. And you have to just go like, okay. It's cute girls like doing like saving the day in a weird city. And you just like kind of have to be okay about that and like fighting zombies. But I, I think I just couldn't buy into it. I, I didn't want to buy into it, I guess is what I'm saying. I could have. Uh, okay. So yeah. So not Jim says, uh, uh, like a reco best show of the season. Yeah. Um, I, I bounced off of it. Maybe I could have given a second chance. I, I don't know if I'm going to. Uh, I think it is a me problem. Uh, and we'll get into this next series that we'll talk about here, which like is probably some people's favorite show of the season, which I was like, 
I will never check this out. So there we go. Um, the, the sh that show being Made in Abyss, The Golden City of the Scorching Sun, um, which is the second season. Um, oh, all, Jizzle, the fact that, the fact that uh, uh, Recoil is queer baiting is no surprise to me. That's not surprise. Unfor that is unfortunately not surprising. Um, okay, so Made in Abyss, The Golden City of the Scorching Sun. I, uh, oh, the last episode is 48 minutes. That rules. Um, oh, uh, 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 Skeleton King, uh, we are using AnnieChart.net uh, uh, to go through and read it. AnnieChart um, uh, lists, you can check out uh, previous seasons of anime. You can check out upcoming seasons. Right now we're looking at the summer 2022 season. So this is not a manga site. This is just a like, hey, here is everything that's out, and here is, like, uh, you can hover over and see, like, oh, this is available on Crunchyroll. Now, for a little while, it seems like this was only going to be on High Dive, that Made in Abyss was only going to be a High Dive show. And I was like, ooh, but then Crunchyroll also had it. Uh, so, but it looked like it might only be a High Dive show. Um, now, here's the thing. Have I watched this? No. Have I missed out what might be the best show of the season? Totally possible. It is totally likely that I have missed out on this show. There's one thing that there's like a deal breaker for me when it comes to anime that I just can't get past media in general, but especially anime. Um, oh yes. Uh, Skeleton King. Yeah. It, uh, it's pretty great. And then if you click on the name, it'll take you out to another page. Uh, from and uh, from that that will give you some information on that and kind of break it out even a little bit more uh, than the, the smaller thing and you can see user comments and stuff like that. Um, Any chart is great, especially for this kind of uh, video that I'm making now. Um, so I can't deal with children in peril. The very concept of children in peril is a deal breaker. So if there is a young child in your horror or your uh, uh, deeply sad action adventure series, I'm probably out. Especially if the main characters are said children in peril. So like Promise Neverland, first, second season, notwithstanding, first season, apparently fantastic. I will never know for, for my own sake if I think it's fantastic or not. Because Promise Neverland, I'm just like, yikes, no, 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 no. Can't. Um, yeah, so like Made in Abyss is not something that I feel comfortable watching for myself. It's just the thing, right? I can't. There are subject matters in anime that I have no problem with that for some other people is a deal breaker. Um, uh, we all have the things that we like. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Like I could try to watch this, but I uh, go back to the first season, but I know that it just doesn't sit right with it. And I don't mind like sad shows, depressing shows, but the children in peril element is like, ugh. like a subgenre. I don't love, I don't love death game anime. I just don't, I don't like death game manga. I just not really into death game stuff. Like it's just not for me. Um, but I, I like a couple of them, just not like the genre that they're just things I know about myself at this point. Um, and there's, here's the other thing, right? In the nineties, I would have watched, if Made in the Abyss came out in the nineties, I would have watched it because any anime that I could get my hands on in the nineties, I was going to watch because there was only so much of it. Now in 2022, I have missed out on beautiful, brilliant series because there's just so many hours in the day and that's just, and everything is available. So you can't, you can't watch everything. Right. But if like I had gotten VHS tapes in 1996 of Made in Abyss, I would watch those episodes multiple times because, oh God, it's anime. Oh, this is hard for me to watch, but I'm going to watch it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's just, it's just the kind of series that doesn't sit with me. Um, uh, oh yeah, it's got a distinct look and I think it's great. Or like, To Your Eternity. The basic premise of two year eternity is there's some sort of life form on this planet that is going to keep meeting 
awesome people who are going to die so that the main character can learn more about humanity from their deaths. And they and sometimes take the appearance of the dead people so that they can remind you about the dead people. And it's like, I don't care if that is the anime of the year. I'm never going to fucking watch To Your Eternity. Hell no. That's not for me. Even if it's brilliant. I just like, that is just, that is a bummer series that like I can't imagine me getting into. Um, uh, a show that I did get into... I'm okay at transitions. Is my Isekai life, I gained a second character class and became the strongest sage in the world. Um, Look, is this a good show? Not really. Is it a fun show? Hell yeah, it is. This is the main character, the Isekai with the main character who is kind of milk toast. Like, Yuji is just like trying to be under... The, even though he is the sage of merit and he is... um. Uh, trying to evaluate my own feelings now, but uh, I don't know why Mecha Pilot Kids dying doesn't freak me out the same way Made in the Abyss does. I don't know. Um, I think we have. You might have had decades of understanding that in Mecha series, uh, mechs blow up, and sometimes there are pilots piloting those mechs. Uh, often there are. They usually mechs don't blow up with, without somebody inside it. So maybe you just had years and years of that. Uh, and yes, war is hell. We'll, you know, once we get into talking about the, uh, the fall season, of course, we'll get into a mech series that feels like it's going to be many, many gut punches. Um, but right now we got to talk about a happy fun show. Yuji is a, is a dude that doesn't have a lot of memories of his previous life, but he knows that he was like an office worker, a salary man and unhappy. And now he's like, my thing is I'm going to, um, go out and I'm going to like uh, live this life and I'm going to, you know, keep a low profile. He is, unfortunately for him, the Sage of Legend and f trouble is going to follow him. Now, the honestly, the best part of this series is all of the slimes because he is a tamer. He tamed, uh, you can see a wolf there named Proud Wolf. We love Proud Wolf, the cowardly, but also sometimes heroic uh, wolf um, and the slimes. Some one slime has an eye patch for no reason. One has a mustache. Uh, they have different personalities. There are red slimes that show up later. These slimes are one. They love Yuji and they're so psyched to be useful and hang out with Yuji. And two, they are just so psyched to be able to use magic and like take care of the bad guys. It it is very fun. Um. My Isekai Life does a, a, thing, a thing that I find very annoying where it starts on like chapter four or five of the manga and then does flashbacks. and st Like the first moment you see Yuji is not him waking up and figuring out what's going on and telling the story. You see Yuji kicking ass uh, with slimes and a wolf and there's a dryad and you're like, what the fuck is happening right now? And then through flashback, like the, the How He Met Proud Wolf flashback happens like episode like eight or something because it doesn't really matter but like it's weird it just jumps into the action and it doesn't need to because audiences at this point are trained to have that first episode be slow and set up the world like it's okay you can just do that you don't have to fight a dragon in the first episode uh the art style is really fun they don't do, use any cgi monsters it's all digital um uh it is a fun series that I think is great. It's on High Dive. I recommend it. Um, uh, and the slimes are cute. Uh, and Yuji is fun. And he, he's, you know, manages to save the day in a way that I think is great continuously. Um, and uh, I also like the idea that, like, most people... He flies under the radar for most people because uh, tamers are supposed to be weak. But he is obviously not weak. No slaves. Um... Uh, uh, he doesn't, he, he parties up with a few people at one point, but most of the time he just goes from town to town helping people. Uh, sometimes he helps people a lot, but like his motives are like, oh, well, if I help this town out, then the, the place that has great food will reopen. But also he helps that town quite a bit and he keeps stopping cult people and, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, he does the right thing all the time. Uh, and yeah, and it's like no harem. 
no love interest, uh, cute slimes. The closing theme is the slime sing, and for some reason is a ode to Bohemian Rhapsody. Why is it like that? Why is the closing song have a Bohemian Rhapsody? Like, no, 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 no thing in it? I don't know, but it does. It's pretty good. Yeah. I would say My Isekai Life is totally worth checking out if you like action shows um, and uh, you like your comic relief to come from, like, fun, cute support characters. Uh, let's see. Um, my stepmother's daughter is my ex. You might not believe this, but I didn't watch this show. So, the premise is obviously they broke up and then their parents got together. So now they're st siblings. And there needs to be a hierarchy in the house of who is the older sibling and who is the younger sibling. Because that's important. It's not. But in this show, it's important, right? So... How they decide who is the um, uh, older sibling and who is the younger sibling is they're doing an elaborate game of chicken to see who will be fall in love with the other, be interested in the other, be sexually attracted to the other. They're just doing a whole game of chicken, pushing the boundaries of what step siblings should be like. The anime. And I didn't watch it. And the fact that they're not related is better than some anime. Let's be clear. But it's still not something that I was like, hell yeah. I should also point out at this point that the spring season and the winter season had some of the best romantic comedy anime in years. We're coming off like... The third season of Love is War, Kaguya-sama. We're coming off like um, uh, um, uh, uh, Shikimori's Not Just a Cutie. Um, oh, the, the show last season about like the weird girl and like the weird guy and she can't talk. Um, uh, and it, I can't remember the name of it, but it's cute as hell. Like this has been a great year for romantic comedies. And this is not one of those. <laughs> yes. No thank you dot JPG. Yeah. It, it's a weird thing. And I didn't watch it. <laughs> Even a couple of cuckoos. Which is like not great. But still better than this. Like please watch a couple of cuckoos before you watch this. Which is not good. Um. Uh. Yes, exactly. I mean, you know, there's look, there's so many shows that I would love another season of. It's so hard to get those shows. And then sometimes we're going to get to it. Sometimes the show is doesn't have a, a second season for years and years and it comes back and it's a bummer. So maybe you don't need a second season of a show if, if enough time has passed. Uh, Orient Part 2. I did not watch Orient Part 1. Um, I don't have anything to say about it except that like I didn't watch the first one because it didn't look good. And so I didn't watch the second half of Orient. Maybe it's great. Again, maybe it is. Overlord. Season 4. This is, this is not as bad of a case of diminishing returns as is it okay to pick up girls in a dungeon. But overlord is very successful as it goes on of making me less and less interested in overlord now i i know that me myself i have a problem i i have a problem with main characters that are terrible and eins is supposed to be terrible and as the shows go on not terrible as a character but a, a villain the main character is a villain, right? We are rooting for the success of a villain. And as the story progresses, he is doing more and more villainous things for a point, but still villainous things. And we're at the point now where they're like, there is like a character that gets introduced in season four that I'm like, I think I would, I would want to root for this character over you. And every, almost every season, first season, not so much, but season two and season three, 
characters are introduced for you to root for, and then they are killed. And this season also does that, where there is like a character that you're like, that guy's pretty cool. Oh, he's dead now? Okay. And I won't go with spoilers because not everybody's seen Arizona. Maybe you're going to get to it. Um, the use of, in season three specifically, and also season four, the use of CGI for background characters. Now, I understood they had to put in like a thousand like uh, monsters in one season, in like one episode. So use your CGI, mix it with your digital. I understand. But in this season, they just have like humans. Like humans that are just... They have humans that are uh, digital, and then behind them is like an army of archers, and they're all clearly bad CGI, and it's just like, oh, that's never going to age well. Like, it's always going to look bad. The season one of Overlord is always going to look better than any season of Overlord that comes after it because of the use of bad blended CGI. Um... And I'm a stick. Uh, I I know I'm a broken record on that. Not a stickler. I'm a broken record on that. But yeah, um, look, there's still good things about this. See, I've been watching season four. I love Shaltier. I didn't always love Shaltier, but season four Shaltier is just trying her best. She's she's trying so hard to learn and grow and be better. She's trying to better herself in a way that I really can get behind, and I. Just appreciate, like, all the mentions of Shaltier in Season 4. The vampire that I was always just like, whoa, that is, that is a violent vampire that got, that was getting hypnotized, uh-oh. And now I'm like, yeah, Shaltier, you're learning. Yeah, you have to fail to succeed sometimes, okay. Who would have thought that I would be on board with the vampire girl? But I am. I mean, also, obviously, Season 3, Overlord, Sebes, the kick-ass old man butler. Sebes rules because he's a cool old man butler that kicks ass uh, and is very strong. So, of course, he's my favorite character in Overlord because I love a cool old butler. Love a cool old butler. I don't know if, I don't know if you know that about me, but I do. All right, we got to keep going through here. We're only on O. Parallel World Pharmacy. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, uh, yes. Uh, to just go back real quick to Overlord. Uh, my favorite parts of Overlord are when Pandora's actor aren't there. Because I, the, the times I most sympathize with Ainz is looking at this edgelord character that he created and being like, yeah, buddy, you really, you really screwed up. You made this guy, huh? Yikes. Um, it's, it's, it's fun. Pandora's a actor has some stuff to do in season four. That's maybe okay. I don't know. Um, but Parallel World Pharmacy. Here's the thing about Parallel World Pharmacy. Uh, it is an isekai. It has its action. It's also about like, hey, what if like the world, one of the world's, uh, best researchers, uh, 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 and pharmacists died and then ended up in a world of magic where he can not only use medicine, but also he has magic. He can use creation magic, and he's been blessed by the god of medicine. Uh, that's this show. So it, in some ways, it is like, hey, this guy opened a pharmacy, and he's dealing with bureaucracy and blah, blah, blah. And also, like, leading up to that. But also, there's magic. So, like, oh, there's an illness. But also, it's being caused by, like, sorcery. Uh, so it is a mix of both of those things. And I think it... it um, the magic is beautiful. It, the animation of the magic is really great. Uh, also, for at least a time, one of the supporting characters is scared shitless when she discovers how powerful uh, Pharma, our main character, is. Pharma has no shadow because of his, like, godhood status, basically, and his incredible, unbelievably impossible, by their standards, magical ability. She's just like... Oh, fuck. What happened to you? Who are you? What are you? And that, like... Because blind acceptance is, is necessary for Isekai. Um, especially the, like, I have taken over the body of someone else. I'm not the person you know you knew kind of thing. Like, you'd have to be like, oh, I guess you've been hiding all these great abilities all this time. This show is just like... 
even with the perfect out of I was struck by lightning and blessed by the god of medicine, they're still like, yeah, but what the fuck, dude? Like, seriously, what's your deal? And I like that. Um, Pharma de Medicis. Yes. The only thing more on the nose than his name being Pharma de Medicis is the fact that uh, his, uh, because of a, a, a funny, little funny, like, him speaking out loud and not realizing that people could hear him when he was saying, um, uh, the name of his pharmacy is Parallel World Pharmacy. Like, his place of business is the name of the anime. And that's silly in a way that I kind of really like. So anyway, I think it's good. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to episode 12 because he's, he's fighting some stuff coming into this. Uh, and I've read the manga and the manga like goes places in a way that I really appreciate. Um, Phantom of the Idol. So I dropped this series because I don't really like idol shows. But um, I watched some of this series because it is about a idol who is looking to quit the business but then meets a ghost of an idol who then can inhabit his body to take over so that he can be a good idol. And then it's like the friends, their fr their relationship, and also like, is there a point where it seems like she's ready to pass on and he stops her because he can't overlook this good gig, this good fortune that he's found? Yeah. Um... The best part of this show is the characters in the way back here, which are the three ladies that liked this dude when he wasn't a good idol. When he was like unhappy to be there and like couldn't make eye contact, they also thought that was great because it's different from most idol boys. And then all of a sudden he's very passionate and good at being an idol and they also like that. So they have to come to terms with it and they like meet up after concerts and like compare notes and their friendship and their relation their their um the presentation of who likes male idols and who goes to male idol shows is really interesting because you don't see that because from my understanding uh girl groups have dedicated male fans who are sometimes great and sometimes not great and young ladies young, love young ladies who are doing the idol stuff. And boys have sometimes guy fans who are definitely not great. And also mostly older ladies who used to be into young ladies uh, idols when they were young ladies. But now they've grown up. They like there's something about nice young boys who perform uh, nice young men, I should say, uh, you know, young men, the teenagers, uh, that they find comforting. And it, it could be creepy, but it seems to not be creepy. It seems to just be like 20s and 30 something ladies who don't have a lot going on can latch onto the perception of what these nice, talented young men are doing. So that's an exploration you don't see in anime. And it's kind of cool in this. But overall, the show is not that great, unfortunately. It's a really great premise, but I don't think it's a good show. So that's on High Dive if you want to check it out. Maybe just watch the first episode because it's kind of interesting, but I don't think it really goes anywhere. Uh, and it's only 10 episodes, which I think is smart because by episode 8, I was kind of done with it. Uh, Prima Doll, I did not watch at all. Um, this is a robot dolls that work at a cafe. Um... Uh, and, but also they used to be machines of war. And I don't understand. Like, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna watch this. I just, I was just like, ah, I don't think I'm gonna watch this show. Uh, actually, did it even come out anywhere? Yes, it's on High Dive. Okay. I didn't even know if it came out here, but yeah, it's on High Dive. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I think we kind of already got one of the most beautiful animes of all time that explored the idea of a uh, weaponized machine that looked like humans trying to figure out what it means to live in times of peace.
Like, I think we already got one of the best anime of modern times that explores this topic. So I don't know if I was going to, like, watch this cute girl version of Violet Evergarden. Like, also one of the most beautifully... I mean, that show was done in Blender. It's unbelievably gorgeous. Uh, so I don't know. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to watch this. Uh, Rent a Girlfriend Season 2. I didn't fucking watch this. Remember how I said earlier in the year there were good romantic comedy shows? Then there's also, how can there be a second season of the, of this show? How? Oh, you know how? Because there's never a moment where any of these girls stop for a second and go, wait, this dude sucks. Because this dude sucks. Uh, Kazuya sucks. And everyone there sucks. Uh, they're, 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 none of them suck. Well, the ex-girlfriend sucks. But none of the other girls, all the other girls are best girls. And they don't des deserve to be in this situation. I watched half of the first season. I can't believe there's more of it. Uh, no thanks. Uh, Ruby, Ice Queendom. I never got into Ruby. Um, uh, I, I just, I'm not, I was not like, maybe I just missed Rooster Teeth as a thing. So I didn't get into like them being like, hey, we're doing a show. We're doing an animation show. And now there's an actual anime of the show. That, this probably would have been a good entry into uh, Ruby because I have it, it is it is a thing that just like exists and is very it is a very popular thing that I have no entry point in. Too, um, I know that some people really liked this adaptation. Other people were really mad at this adaptation, and I don't know if all of those people that were mad also love the show or just hate the idea of Ruby in general, or they don't. I don't know what they didn't like about it. I do know that the animation style would make it easier for me to watch because I think that like what I've seen clips I've seen of Ruby looked like the other the other versions of Ruby looked bad. It didn't look like something I wanted to watch. But I, I don't know. I feel like I could just be like an old man about this. Um if you watched it and loved it, hell yeah. If you watched it and you were disappointed, I'm sorry. Um, Shadow House Season 2. I... The idea of, like, a horror mystery slice of life is intriguing, but Season 1 didn't really do anything for me. I, I ended up quitting Season 1, like, halfway through, I want to say. Maybe even, like, four episodes in. So I didn't watch Season 2. Um, uh, this is one of my friend's favorite shows this season. So, um, apparently this is a good Season 2. But yeah, just didn't really did anything for me. Um, but Cloverworks is a great company, so I'm glad they're putting out stuff that people like. Shine On, Bakumatsu, Bad Boys. Um, this looked awful. The trailer for this looked unbelievably terrible. I do like the name Shine On, Bakumatsu, Bad Boys, but I think that's the only part of this where I was like, nah. Yeah, no. And also it's like, it's not historical, but it's like, it's one of those anime that's like, this is not history, but like, what if it was? But it's not like historical fiction, but like, alternative history, maybe? I don't know. I didn't watch it. Um, Shine Post. No, I didn't watch this. Um, although the idol group, Ting's, which is sings uh, with the letters mixed around. Uh, it's chasing after big dreams. So far, their accomplishments have only been small. And now they're facing a potential breakup. Uh, the new manager with a special skill set takes them under his wing. The member of Tings find themselves shooting to the stars all over again. And I don't know why it's supernatural. But I do know I didn't watch it. Why were there so many idol shows this season? I mean, there's always idol shows. Uh, sing, t yeah. So it's 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 like sing with a T in it. Uh, shoot, goal to the future. Uh, it is a sequel to Shoot Arata Naro Detsu Setsu. Did not watch this. Um, 
I did not watch this soccer uh, anime uh, or football anime. Um, Smile of the Arstoria, the animation, is based on a video game. Uh, and it is like ladies, like it is like a slice of life about a wizarding school with ladies in it. But also, I watched the first episode and I was like, oh, you're going to pull some shit on me. Um, Spike Spiegel, yes, we did talk about uh, Lycoris Recoil. I, um, uh, summary of that, um, I watched it. I couldn't suspend my disbelief on it. Like, I, I kept asking myself too many questions that the anime that I shouldn't have, it's on me. I should have just let it wash over me, but I couldn't. Like, how can those bullets go through a car door, but then not kill anyone? And various other things of like, why is it like, what's, what's happening here? Like there was just like a lot, I had a lot of questions while I was watching it and I couldn't fully engage with it, but I know that a lot of people like the show. That was my short sentiments about, uh, uh, a recoil. Um, uh, smile, the, uh, uh, our story of the animation I did not watch because, well, um, Yes, uh, armor-piercing um, stun bullets is just, like, a weird thing. Um, so, Smile is, like, a cute slice of life, but you know that tragedy is com coming, right? Uh, tragedy is coming in the background, in the edges of this show, and I wasn't interested in, like... Because it felt like this show might be just leading up to all of them dying or something. I was like one of these girls is definitely dying. Like there's like weird. It's one of those things where you're like, it's not going the full on like magical girl, like 2010s magical girl where like, Hey, actually being a magic girl is fucked up. It's not going that far. I don't think, but maybe it is doing a thing where like, Hey, you're witches though. Um, I don't know. Cause I didn't find out. But there is a sinister layer to that that I was just like, I'm not interested in getting my heart broken because this show doesn't seem that great. Uh, so it wasn't worth investing my heart into it. Um, boy, I like this show and I understand why you would never watch it. Teppin, Laughing Till You Cry, is a slice of life. It is girls doing things. It is a series about... Stand-up comedians who are in groups of three, trio stand-up comedians doing Monza, which they, uh, which traditionally is a form of duo uh, stand-up comedy. The closest thing is like Laurel and Hardy. It is that like, uh, but but it is a very Japanese. It's a little bit like Three Stooges, but it is presentational uh, stand-up comedy where like there is somebody who is like setting up a premise or telling a story and then someone is reacting to that story sometimes adding information but also generally calling out the reality or asking questions asking leading questions and then getting the laughs and the reactions um uh popularized in uh in japan is kind of like um it ha it feels like it has it has its roots in tr traditional ja japan but also it, it feels more vaudeville than any than any kind of contemporary stand-up that we know um, uh, maybe the Sklar brothers are kind of Monza because they have a lot of, but they have a lot of agreement. They're more peas in the pod, but they do a lot of presentational things to the audience instead of just tell, and they're, and they're also fast. A lot of Monza is fast. Um, so this is trios and it's five groups of trios. So this show features 15 girls in, that live in a house together. And they're in a competition, a, a, a Japan-wide competition. So every episode, I think the premise is great. Every episode, uh, there's three girls, one of the groups, and they're starting to tell a stand-up thing. And we don't see them tell the stand-up bit because we cut back to the events that lead to the joke they wrote for the, their set. Um, so basically, we see the girls at the beginning, then we see all of the events that led to it, and it's comedic and it's silly, and then we see the girls on stage wrapping up their bit to applause. There are a couple episodes that don't follow this format, but most of them do. Uh, there's a lot of girls. There's too many girls. You might be not be surprised to know that every girl in this show are all part of the same agency. And in fact, this show is 
like there's a manga to go along with the source isn't the manga the manga came out to promote the anime like right before it the three main girls in the group young yy their gimmick is that all the girls names start with y um some girls have some groups have better gimmicks like the girls obsessed with aliens um uh and the girls that are all rich celebrity um but there's one group that uh their gimmick is that all the girls names start with y uh, the voice actresses for this group um, did these characters as like uh, like a drum, like a radio thing, and like uh, I think like YouTube videos. Um, they are all in the same agency, and they all knew each other. And this was something they did between anime seasons. They created these characters, and then the show was built around them. So they're kind of the main characters. Um, I love comedy. I love stand up comedy. I love. Uh, shows about comedy and we've gotten a few this show is not necessarily about comedy it is about comedians if that makes any sense so like it's not mark Marin podcast it's not uh, wtf with mark Marin. it's like mark Marin the tv show like the wtf like tv show like that's kind of what it is uh it's more comedy bang bang than wtf it's it it is it is about comedy, but it's about the people making the comedy. Uh, so there, th- so there's not a lot of conversations about like in depth. There's not in depth conversations about like joke structure in this one. Um, it's just an excuse to have a lot of fun girls doing comedy stuff. Um, yeah. So there. So the the real trick to that uh, proto cube is there aren't a lot of Monza jokes in it. There is like setup. And then you see comedy happening and, and people interacting like misunderstandings or, ooh, actually this one girl doesn't have money. She's a celebrity, but she's actually not rich. So she's going to do a bunch of get rich quick schemes and you follow her on that. Or like the thing that actually this show is well known for is that episode two didn't air when it was supposed to because it was supposed to air days after an assassination of a public figure in Japan. And the plot of episode two was the girls trying to figure out uh, which of the other girls were plotting an assassination attempt of a world leader that is clearly Donald Trump, but they don't call him Donald Trump, visiting from Japan or visiting Japan. So they had they, they put that episode out like months later because it's not about assassination. No one gets assassinated, but it was too soon uh so like but there's no there's jokes there's comedy in it but there's no like written jokes being rehearsed and performed there's very little about the art of stand-up in the show it's just a cute girls doing cute things it's just the thing they're doing is in a competition uh, about stand-up comedy uh i love it because i like things about comedy because i love comedy um but i would say this would be a very hard show to recommend. I think their opening song they all sing where they kind of introduce the groups uh, is kind of fun. But I would say that this is a easy pass. There's no real reason for you to watch this unless you watch everything. If you're watching everything on Crunchyroll, sure. Uh, also, uh, we put the note here. The airing in the second episode uh, was originally canceled due to various circumstances, which is very funny. Various circumstances of like, Global events is like another fun term. Um, Devil is a part timer season two. I will someday, someday I will finish this second season. Someday I will finish the second season because they got a fucking second season. This Isekai got a second goddamn season, but it's bad. There, it's bad in my opinion for two reasons. One, the introduction of a child just throws off the whole thing in a way that I don't particularly enjoy. Uh, oh, I'm glad you're liking it, Spike. Um, I think the addition of a child just kind of like, I mean, you, you want to mix things up, right? But I just think that it is very like, oh, now there's a kid. Deal with it. Like, eh, I'm not the big thing. Um, the other thing about it is I think the animation is, isn't that great. Now, I've been told that later episodes, the animation improves, but the early episodes that i've watched um the the animation feels like is cutting a lot of corners um that there's a 
Spike, you said jank. That's a great word. There is a lot of jank. It's one of those things where I'm like, is it, are they missing? Like, I know that it's digital, but it feels like they're skipping cells. Like they're, like there's like, it's, it's not stuttering. It's like jumping. And I just like the first, here's the thing. The real secret is about Devil's Part-Timer season one is they only had to do a few really beautiful uh, set pieces. There wasn't a lot of fighting. A lot of episodes were just like, them dealing with like going to work and the interacting characters and maybe like maybe there'd be like a, a hint of fighting so people in their minds remember how beautiful the first season is and it is some of that animation is gorgeous but they didn't have to do every episode wasn't gorgeous but it's remembered because those fight scenes are great and in this one they're like, hey, here's the first fight scene of the second season. We finally, there's more Devil is a Part-Timer. We're back, baby. And it's like, yikes. Yikes, this looks bad. Um, and it's a bummer. Uh, but someday I will finish it because I am a completionist of things that I've liked in the past. I will, I will usually give shows. And I also appreciate that it's back. Um, you know, you're, you're fine. Yeah, if you're fine with the jank, I understand. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly not the first, like a, like half of season two of One Punch Man is just embarrassing. Uh, eventually, uh, One Punch Man settles into it. Like the second half of One Punch Man season two, I think the animation takes a big leap forward, but the first ones, they must have been really scrambling, uh, because some of those episodes did not turn out great. Um, and it's not, this isn't as bad as that. Uh, the maid I hired recently is mysterious. I did not watch this. Uh, this, I don't mind a good romance show. In fact, I love a good romance show, but like, I don't know. I'm not super against, hmm. I don't love romance dynamics that involve, um, different statuses in the, in, in the workplace. You know what I mean? Like coworkers falling in love. Sure. But like I'm falling in love with my maid. It's just like, well then set her up in another place before you do. You know what I mean? You know what? I, I don't know. I, I'm not being super, uh, uh, um, I'm not doing a perfect job of explaining my point here. I don't think. Uh, I think Silverlink is a fantastic company um, and they know what they're doing with romance. But the core premise of this one, like it's just, yeah, ethical issues. I, certainly. It's just, it, it feels like, no, no, I think I'm, I think I'm okay on that one. Um, yeah, Crunchyroll picked that one. That's right. Uh, Prince of Tennis 2, U17 World Cup. I haven't watched this is a sequel to a, that, and uh, oh, we got a, a follower. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dustin, for 18 months, um, a year and a half anime and Gundams. Indeed, thank you very much for 18 months uh, support. Appreciate that. Uh, thanks for using uh, your Prime. That's very kind of you. Um, I haven't watched Prince of Tennis in years and years and years. I have no idea if, if it's good right now, if it's making a comeback, if it's if this is their, like, you know, like, why are they even doing this? I don't know. Couldn't tell you anything about it. Um, Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. This was my show. To, this was one of the shows that I recommended at the beginning of this season. Because the first couple episodes were so fucking good that I was like, this is your lovely slice of life. All the feelings. This is your, like cozy anime of the season i can't believe it's so great and then they just like they it's not pulling the rug out from under you it's revealing what the show really is so what i thought the show was going to be from the first couple episodes was a show about a yakuza family where their lieutenant who is known for being a guy that goes overboard that is like maybe too in love with the fighting he gets reassigned to be the guardian of the Yakuza boss's uh, uh, daughter, who is now coming to live uh, with them. Uh, and there's stuff going on with the mother, and it's sad. And there's this little precocious girl that, like, really doesn't have a 
great relationship, doesn't really have any relationship with her dad, doesn't really know the people there, and doesn't really have a male person in her life, like a father figure in her life. And it's the first couple episodes are like him figuring out how to be a babysitter and being a, a caretaker of this girl and like a bodyguard. Um, and her like trusting people and like trying to figure out how to have like friends her own age and what that can mean and like dealing with grief over her mother and it's beautiful and cute. But the thing about this show, it's not a show about these two characters. It's a show about the guy that has to babysit a girl and how a lot of people don't want him to do that. Because this show is mostly about a lot of other Yakuza members in other families that miss this guy because they either respect him or because they want to beat him uh, and be number one or they want revenge and how they can't acknowledge or understand why he's gone soft. So it's actually really just about this dude who's fine to great. He's good. But it's mostly the violent stuff that I'm like, because it does have cute factor. It totally is. Um, she's great. But to me, the balance on this show is off. Like you can have the violent stuff in it. And maybe it would be too saccharine if he immediately turned over a new leaf and you never saw his violent side or anything. But like, there's a point where this girl is in peril. And we've already talked about that tonight, how I don't like that. And I did not necessarily expect this show to also put her in peril at any point. And I think it's like, it's there's too much Yakuza in the Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting for my liking. Maybe you're thinking it's great and... Uh, uh, I do think it's worth checking out, but it just was, I think it was a little bit like too much and I haven't watched, I, I, I gave up, I think I, I didn't give up. I'm going to finish it probably, but I'm not watching it weekly at around episode eight or nine. I was just like, this is, there's too much Yakuza in this game and I wanted to be a little more babysitting, I guess. Uh, but I like the premise a lot and I do like that. I do like that he's never mad about the job. He doesn't begrudge him, her. He's like, this is my assignment, and this is what I'm doing. And I don't know how to do it well, but I'll figure it out. And I like that. I like that we didn't have him being angry at a kid because he's got a babysitter. So that was good. Uh, Tokyo Mew Mew New. I did not watch. I don't think I ever watched Tokyo Mew Mew. I will say this. Calling this show Tokyo Mew Mew New is very good. Mew Mew New, that's very good. I like the title of this a lot, even though I didn't watch it. And, did, wait, was this a high dive? Let me see. Uh, Billy B. Yeah, high dive. It was a high dive show. So, um, I'm glad that it exists. I'm glad that people liked it. Not for me. Um, uh, is the Yakuza Guide to Babysitting just a Yakuza version of Suburban Commando? Yeah, but on, but like, what if everyone was pretty much immediately on board with within the group was on board with what was going on? Because there's no moment where he's like, "What am I even doing here?" He's just like, "Okay, this is my job. All right." Um. So again, I don't have much to say about Tokyo Mew Mew New. I wish I had more to say about Uncle from Another World, aka Isekai Uncle. Um. So this show has run into some trouble. It uh. It was some people. Okay. Uh, it's off right now. It's a Netflix show. They waited like three or four weeks into the season. Um, and then they were like, okay, now we're airing it. So like it, it had basically like a time delay. And then they were like, now we're going to start putting it out. Um, and then production stopped on the show. Uh, and they said it was COVID related. And then it's being pushed. So it'll be back next season. They'll re-air every episode weekly in Japan. And then Netflix will eventually pick up the episodes they didn't already air on television in Japan. Um, I appreciate that this show kept how fucking ugly it is. 
because the world in the the premise is this dude has just been this dude went on a bunch of adventures and it wasn't fun because everyone thought he was ugly. Now some people were came to love him and he didn't recognize it because Sundere was not a concept that he knew about that it wasn't a popularized concept, so he didn't know to recognize Sundere. Um, but most people just thought that he was a monster and ugly, and he did not have a great time. And then he's back on the real world. He's in this world. He's been in a coma, uh, and uh, the world has changed. So you're going to hear about his events. So it's a, kind of like a mix between him figuring out what's going on in this world and him figuring out and him relating to his nephew, his adventures over there, and then you get his nephews. Um, uh, take on it, like his like somewhat objective take on the situation, being like, actually, I think this was what was going on, and that kind of stuff. Um, production seemed, um, I don't want to say cursed, but bad. Uh, um, uh, seems like they're 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 having some trouble. Uh, his love of the Sega Saturn is a nice touch, though. Yes, he wakes up, and one of the first things he wants to know is how is Sega doing, because he's a Sega fanboy, and. Sega has gone through some troubles while he has been asleep. Uh, I would recommend checking out the manga. Um, uh, uh, Isekai Uncle, like, again, the, the manga art is, like, kind of brutal. And then it is also, the anime didn't, like, tone it down that much. I mean, it toned down a little bit. But, like, yeah, he is not a handsome dude. Um, and, yeah, it's, like, kind of great. But, um, uh, the production is kind of cursed. Now, there have been conflicting reports. Some people said, oh, there was an outbreak of COVID at the studio. Other people have said, uh, they're just, they were just, they just needed more time. They're just like, need, like their, ep the episodes just weren't like, they were just way behind it in it over their head and maybe not doing a great job. So we'll see what happens when it comes back, um, uh, I assume it will come back next season. We'll see. Um, but yeah. Uh, I did not wa watch Uto Ramorimono, blah, 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 Mask of Truth. Um, I think I tried to get into this show when it first... This is like the... It, I don't think it's a remake. I think it's a continuation of a show from like the 90s, the early 2000s, maybe the early 2000s. I've never been able to get into this show about a guy that loses his memory and hangs out with a bunch of like demi-humans and maybe a god or maybe just a man or maybe was a person that was evil in the past and i don't know underwater ray romano says brozard yeah i don't know um yeah um nah i i just don't know anything about it i i tried to get into it but yeah um Vermil in Gold is a show that I have some friends that really like this show. It is about a dude that's bad in school, so he summons a demon, and it's horny. The whole the show is horny. Um, it's a show about a horny demon. Uh, that sounds even more nineties than it's a guy uncle. Yeah, um, uh, Vermil in Gold is just like a. Is this appropriate? Oh, you're not going to answer that question? Okay, let's move on. Kind of a show. Yes. So here's the thing, right? Jizzle, we'll say this right now. Um, I think appropriate horny is fine. Like, uh, Uzaki-chan wants to hang out. Season two is coming up. Uzaki-chan wants to hang out. He's a show about a co two college students that are friends, and one of them is pushing the buttons of the other and it is sometimes very horny and there are parts of the series that are like weird and maybe not great but for the most part it's like yeah heart, horny college kids sure but it's like i summoned this girl and she's like definitely wants to sleep with me and i'm like no i don't want to watch that or like there was a show a couple seasons ago that was like i'm ho i'm a homeless boy and i've been taken in to become the dorm uh, mother, even though I'm a boy, of this house of horny older ladies or who are like college age. And I'm just like, no, I'm not going to watch that show. Maybe it's fucking great, but I don't give a shit if it is or not. Um, 
there's time and a place, and I'm just like, uh And there are also there's this show has characters who have agency over their own sexual desires, and this show wants you, the audience, to be horny. Those are two different things. Um, and one of them can also be like, hey, right? But like the second one is the one that I'm generally like, no one's having a good time here, including me. So what are we doing? So I didn't watch that. Um, I did not watch. Th this is one. This is on my list of shows that I probably should check back in. It's mostly a problem of there being so many good uh, romantic comedies this year that I already watched that when will Ayumu make his move is like, it's also the thing of like, just fucking ask her out. I don't know what to tell you. Like, the core premise of, I like this girl, love at first sight, so I'm going to join the group that she's in, but I'm going to beat her at the thing that she's good at and then confess instead of just asking her out on a date. It's very fucking high school, and I get that, but I'm like, just fucking ask her out. Why do you have to be better than her? Why? Ugh. Um, yes, it's a, it's a pretty okay pun. Make his move, Shogi. It's pretty good. It's not a bad pun. Um, places for it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Tony, uh, uh, Tony the Swordsman. Like, um, uh, the, that cosplay one. There's a, the cosplay anime. Uh, that cosplay anime was very horny, but it totally made sense. I didn't really want to watch the horny cosplay anime, but like, I totally understood why that, uh, uh, dress up something or other. Uh, I understand why that show was popular and people liked it. Dress up darling. That's the name of it. I understand that. I get that that show was like pretty fucking horny. Uh, but it was also about like, people making costumes and be in like, and all of that. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. It wasn't for me, but I understand why that one was fucking or, um, a sign you're getting older judge of this child. Like, uh, will they, uh, won't they definitely gets old fast. Yeah. Right. Uh, it earned its hornies. There you go. So that's what I'm saying. Like, right. Like, yeah, it makes sense. Um, so yeah, I didn't watch this one. Cause I'm just like, just ask her out. Uh, that's why I like Shiki Mori's not a, just a cutie. Because the episode one, those characters are dating. It's not a will they, won't they. They are dating. And it is their exploits as being a couple that are dating. And I was like, that fucking kicks ass. They are already in a relationship. It was very good. Shiki Mori's Not Just a Cutie is great. Um, uh, Yuri Deko. It, Science Saru made my favorite anime of 2020. Uh, uh, keep your hands off Isaacin. My favorite show of 2020. Uh, Yuri Deco is not my favorite show of 2022. It is weird for weird sake. And uh, I don't know if they stuck the landing. And I kind of don't care if they stuck the landing. Um, uh, the whole thing of like... Oh, a, a person that leads a, a group of hackers named Hacked. Like there's everything about it. Look, is there a man that wears a suit and a cat mask with a mustache? Yes. Watson is in there. Obviously, I think Watson rules because of the man wearing a cat mask with a mustache. So, of course, and a business suit. I think that's great. But, yeah, I watched like four of the three or four episodes of Yuri Deco. Uh, uh, and I did not enjoy my time with it. Um, I think Science Saru does incredibly beautiful anime, but this show needed, I think this show needed to be an, an, like this show doesn't work as an original because I don't think that the writing is strong enough. It was an adaptation of something. Maybe it would have been a better show, uh, but it does look very cool. Um, I think they were like, Hey, what if we made our own wonder egg, but we weren't like, it wasn't psychological. What if we made a not psychological wonder egg is kind of what I think they were going for. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but it, 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 it kind of falls flat. I will say, 
Uh, shorts, I didn't wa- I watched one short this season, so I'm just going to scroll through because I didn't watch any of these. Um, oh, I guess maybe it's... Oh, it's an OVA. Sorry, it's considered an OVA. They're shorts, but they come out on YouTube in Japan, and then they're on High Dive. So I got to scroll down to get there. Uh, Wonder Egg Priority never stuck the landing. Yeah, even their extra episode with more time, apparently. Um... Uh, so I didn't watch. Uh, so I didn't watch any of these shorts. I watched one thing, like I said, but it's considered an OVA or an OA. Um, leftovers, couple of cuckoos. Uh, this one started last season where there were already, already so many good romantic comedies that I didn't check this one out. Um, I do like that everyone in the show seems the same level of really stupid, and I like that they're all stupid at the same level, and I think that's nice. But yeah, I didn't end up picking this one out. Of like people that are forced to be in, or pretending to be in a relationship and one of them doesn't want to, and then there are other girls, and I just yeah, I didn't I didn't check it out. Um, I didn't watch the soccer anime uh, with tough looking boys. Uh, I didn't watch King Max. Um, I didn't watch Kingdom because I don't roam. I don't. I I just didn't watch it. I just never been into it. Um, uh, oh, they were push, pushing a couple of cuckoos. Uh, a lot yeah uh love all play did not watch that a badminton anime got 24 episodes that's pretty cool um okay uh so you recommend uh, uh if i liked uh you recommend this one if i liked haikyuu okay i appreciate that um i mean i like how tough some of these boys look i like that um onipon uh had 60 episodes. These must be very short. Um, hide, I've got it. Uh, aired in two versions. A 60 episode, three minute short series. And a combined 12 minute, 14 minute series. Of the same content. Okay. I didn't watch that. That's interesting. Uh, summertime rendering. I, I, what is that? Is that like, yeah, it's Disney plus. Um, this is a death game anime, and I, uh, there's something so weird about the juxtaposition of this photo. The, pre- not juxtaposition, the presentation of this photo, right? Um, like, this dude's got a revolver, and she's in a bathing suit. And then this schoolgirl has a knife. And then he's got, like, a, a nail gun. And I'm like, what, Th- these four characters are all in the same anime? And then what's going on with this guy? And I'm like... It's kind of intriguing. I'll probably never know because I generally don't like, especially with adding Supernatural in there. I'm like, nah, that's not my thing. Um, there's no good way to watch Zombie Tall, and I kind of want to watch it because it sounds weird. There's one zombie left on Earth, and this dude is going to make sure nobody knows that, and it's a comedy. And I don't know how that works, but I was like, uh, okay. Uh, summertime rendering is one show I've thought really hard about getting Disney Plus subscription. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Yeah, I just feel like it's not my genre, but it could be great. I'm going to drink a little water because we're almost ready to move on uh, to the... Uh, we're almost ready for finally our fall preview. Um, some movies. I don't know if I watched any movies this season. Um, I'm going to watch Red at some point, but I, I'm not going to go to the movie theater, so that's going to be a while. Um, uh, I don't think I, uh, Crunchyroll, please pick up the Yuri Camp movie so I can watch it legally. Please, 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 please. I want to watch the Yuri Camp movie. I love Yuri Camp so much. I love Laidback Camp. I want to watch the Laidback Camp movie. Um, uh, well, this was this fall is stacked, so we're gonna get there. Um, uh, I want to watch the year came movie. Um, oh, Aharon San, no Hakaranai was the other. That was Aharon San was the other fun romantic uh, school comedy show that I uh, that I'd forgotten the name of. Aharon San was fun. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, we got a bunch of. Um, Bastard, I didn't watch because I don't have Netflix right now. I heard the first, like, 
few episodes were really good and then some people didn't like the later episodes of bastard but i like that there's a bastard remake that's weird there's a bastard remake in 2022 huh i don't know i don't know if it holds up but like i'm glad it exists um uh i don't know but that uh uh, I again because I don't have Netflix at the moment. I have not watched Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I hear very good things about this show. Um, the only criticism that I've read or heard of is people saying that they wish it wasn't ten episodes. They wish it was twelve. That it feels like maybe like rushed in some places. But I've heard very good things about it. Um, title in all caps with exclamation point. Worth a look. Yeah, often. Um, Doomsday with my dog is the last thing that I will talk about from this season. It's on YouTube, uh, but it's it's region locked on YouTube. Um, but it is also on um, uh, uh, High Dive, and it's shorts. They're two minute episodes. It's very funny. It is done motion comics style, so you just have like. The, an, the, the words flying in, so it's easy to translate and uh, because you're just reading the text on there. There's no subtitles on the bottom. Uh, so it is done like motion comic, like manga style. Uh, the premise is wild. Some event, an event happened. There's one human left on the earth. It's our main character. We don't know her name. Uh, her dog, Haru, the Shiba Inu, is there with her. It is a, a weird world where she can understand... Um, the dog and could before the apocalypse before this event happened she could also understand her dog i don't know why uh there are other animals there's mythological creatures every episode is short and weird it's very strange if you have high dive give a couple like just watch a few episodes they come out in chunks like every couple days they put up a bunch because they're short, like i said short episodes um some jokes don't land, and they might be a translation thing, or I'm just not understanding what they're referencing. Uh, but it's funny and weird, and I love the premise. I don't know. And also, I think motion comics are kind of fun. So it's like, Way of the House Husband was like li limited animation, and this is just like motion. It's way more motion comic, I think, than Way of the House Husband, maybe. I don't, it's hard to kind of really describe, but it's like, there's some expression changes, but mostly it's static. And it, it, but there's voice acting. Um, it, I think it's cool. It's a cool way to do this kind of a short where you don't really need much motion anyway. There's some motion, but not much. Um, and then I've heard good things about Drifting Home. I have not checked it out, uh, but I have heard good things about that. Also, someone in the chat mentioned it as well. Um, and let's just quickly see because oh this ova i'm going to talk about this on thursday on my stream because i i'm going to uh, watch the second part this is a two-part for i'm quitting heroing a action adventure show that is actually an isekai kind of but maybe not an isekai that was good and i feel like no one watched it and they put out the ovas at the, when they put the tv out and the uh and high dive put out the ovas which is cool uh, and I'm going to talk about those on Thursday on the stream. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, uh, Stone Ocean uh, is, I eventually have to watch most of Stone Ocean. I watched some of it, but I don't have Netflix right now. I'm going to get it again. I'm going to get caught up on Stone Ocean because, you know, fuck yeah. Uh, and then a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and then, hey, you know, I was talking about sad shit. This shit is fucking sad. Um... Oh yeah, the liver. That is the uh, that is the uh, Gundam that I have pre-ordered for the model kit. Um, Mobile Suit Gundam: The Witch for Mercury Prologue is available on YouTube, and you could just watch it on YouTube. Uh, it's fine. It's there, and you can just watch it, and it's cool. And that's the prologue for um, a Gundam series with a female protagonist, which rules, and and Gundams that look like kind of Iron Blooded Orphans. Kind of G Reco, kind of Gundam Seed. It's like a weird mismatch of a lot of different Gundam series style that, in some cases, feels maybe a little too busy, but in other cases, feels very like demonic instead of humanoid in their Gundams, which I is one of the things I love about Iron Blood Orphans. Also, 
Um, yeah, Dustin, it does go hard. This is a fucking brute. It's it was a bummer to watch. I watched it in the afternoon and had a bad day after a good bad day. But I, I, I was specifically told that it was sad and that I did not watch it before bed, so I was bummed out. But I, there was definitely, the day I watched this, I was like, oh, wow, that was that was beautiful, but, but rough. And um, I can't wait. Um, I cannot wait for a Gundam series that allows itself to be brutal and sad because the last few Gundam series we've had have been focused on Gunpla and kids, and that rules because you need more kids to be involved in Gunpla so that people like me can buy more Gunpla. And then more Gunpla comes out internationally and you don't have to import Gunpla from Japan. So uh, build fighters, build divers, uh, br breaker battle log being on YouTube and not on uh, any services. Those things are important to celebrate how fucking great and cool Gunpla is. And I respect it and I understand it. But also I'm looking for uh, for like more than just like Hathaway, like a movie. Um, Pat wants his sad Gundam series. And looks like Pat's getting a sad Gundam series. Um, it's Milk and Welsh. So there's that. Okay, cool. That's a fun fact. Thank you, Bruno Q. Uh, that I will try to learn how... Before I get that model kit in the mail, I'll learn how to see the name of it. Um, yeah, that dude, yeah. There's a lot of that got me in this thing. It's like... Oof. And who knows? Maybe the series won't be as sad as the prologue, but I fucking doubt it. It's gonna be sad. Anyway, I'm, I'm psyched. I'm psyched for a, a like, modern, high-def, Good ass looking Gundam series. Uh, but yeah. Um, I didn't watch that. I, I, uh, I did watch the OVA for My Hero Academia. Um, Bones is just. Man, fucking Bones is so good. Bones is such a good studio. Like, My Hero is not at the height that it was. And I think part of that is because where the mangaka wanted to go with the story, it's like doesn't hit as hard as some of the other stories. It's it's like kind of like the villain arc is a, is an interesting arc that some people fucking love and other people really hate. And then like the school, like the class A versus class B stuff, like I think is awesome because it just introduces those characters you saw in the background and you were like, Hey, why is that girl a ghost? Why is that girl have, why is that girl like look like she's a ketchup bottle? What's up with that glue dude? Uh, what's up with the guy that's got a scouter like he's in Dragon Ball? What's what's that guy's deal? Like, all those characters, you didn't get a good sense of who they were. And then they were like, now we're good, watch them fight. And it's like, finally. And I understand why some people were like, hey, why was the old guy, like, what was up with that the fancy dapper guy that was a villain? What, what was going on with that? What the fuck? Um... Bones and Wit are neck and neck for me. For best animation studio right now. Uh, for me, it's Bones and Mappa. Uh, those are my probably my favorite. A1 has its hit, has it hits. Um, Bones also has like a lot of teams. Because they have like the My Hero team. And they also have like the Stray Dogs team that does like... the their, One of their studios does like new shows. Like they'll be like, oh, we're Stray Dogs. And then they're like... And, but also we're doing like... Uh, skate the affinity and then there's just like I don't know there's a lot of good bones crews uh, yeah Mappa is right up there um, uh, I didn't watch uh, so yeah alright uh, and then I'm not y'all Saint Seiya first of all I think it looks bad I think this looks real bad so um, I have not been watching Saint Seiya Knights of the Zodiac Battle for Sanctuary also They did an English language version of the song. And then of Pegasus Fantasy, they got European dudes to sing Pegasus Fantasy in English. So that's great that they got somebody who, whose English is not their native language to sing it. That makes it great. They changed the background song a lot. 
The solos are different. Not good. The real thing is that no one shouts Saint Seiya and they most they change the lyrics of Pegasus Fantasy. The song is called Pegasus Fantasy and the guy who sings the song doesn't sing Pegasus Fantasy enough. And you're like, what are we even doing here? And then not enough screaming of Saint Seiya. Pegasus Fantasy, the re- look, Saint Seiya is great. We don't think about it here in the United States where I'm at as great. It is. It's fantastic. One of the reasons why it's a beloved anime in South America is because the song Pegasus Fantasy kicks ass. That song has charted in multiple South American cult countries multiple times. There was a dude on um, uh, uh, The Voice Peru that got onto the show because he sang Pegasus Fantasy. And you can look on the face of someone, uh, one of the judges, who's just like, well, I got to get him in. He's doing Pegasus Fantasy. Like, he, he's just like, yeah, yeah, that's a, definitely a button press for me. Like... That song made it, made that anime. And then it backs it up by being a cool story of like underdogs and like it's cool and fun and the animation is gorgeous in the beginning. Um, uh, uh, I don't think, though, no, because this is, um, this is Netflix. Uh, oh, no, no, wait, that's right. That's right. This is the Netflix. This is Crunchyroll. Um, that's right. Sorry. Toei is doing this and maybe Crunchyroll invested it. That's right. This is, this is, this is, um, this is not, I think Netflix is airing the dub, I believe. Um, so there have been shows that sh- that had, um, that didn't have the song. Uh, there's a group that did like a Saint Seiya, like OVA that became a series and it wasn't the original song, but makeup, makeups, Pegasus Fantasy is gorgeous and I can't keep talking about it because we haven't gotten into the new season but I just need this is the this is the best place for me to complain about their treatment of a beautiful song uh and an unbelievably good song so your homework is to listen to Pegasus Fantasy uh there will be a million covers on YouTube because if you are a YouTuber that sings anime songs you have covered Pegasus Fantasy because if only to uh, make sure that the Korean audience that also loves that song are demanding you do it. Or in the Thai audience and the South American audience, people want to hear covers of that song. Uh, all right. So now, now it's finally time. Two hours later into the stream. Uh, so this is going to be a long video. Fall 2022. Uh, and we're doing by title. Uh, not by release, we're going to be title. Uh, release, I'll just say, uh, the season's actually starting on Saturday. It, it doesn't really start for a while, but the first show of the new season is coming on Saturday. I'm taming, uh, I'm the villainous, so I'm taming the final boss. It's an isekai, it's a romance show. Uh, uh, and it's just like, I think it's a isekai. I, I don't think it's just a reincarnation story. I believe it's an isekai. Um, but maybe it's just an, a reincarnation story. Don't hold me to that. Uh, but it's a romance and it's cute. Uh, and I'm going to watch it. Again, don't quote me on that. It's a, it might not be an easy guy. It might just be reincarnation. Um, uh, this show has not been picked up by anybody yet. Uh, when I say this show hasn't been picked up by anybody, that doesn't mean it won't be. It means right now it has not been. Um, but we're still... This show isn't airing for 24 days, right? So, like, anything can happen. This could get picked up. So, any show that I'm talking about here, if I say it hasn't been announced, it just hasn't been announced yet. Um, because there are shows that don't get picked up by anybody. But, but let's be real. A lot of shows are going to get picked up. Unless they're, unless they're meant for children. Because why subtitle a show for young children? Is, is you know, they're thinking. Um... It's a school comedy, so it's school, girls at school. That seems fun. Um, but also, one of them's a ninja, and one of them is a uh, a pilot, and the girl has superhero powers, and then there is a boy pretending to be a girl. And I wonder if a lot of the jokes in this show are about that boy. 
I bet they are. Um, and then we've got Akiba Made Sensu, uh, another show that has not been picked up by anybody that we know of. Uh, okay. Oh, Akibara is full of maids. So there's a maid cafe. And one of them is known as Pig Pig Hut. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm probably not going to watch this. Maybe it'll be one of those my friends will tell me it's great. Uh, Beast Tamer is... This is not an isekai, but it is an adventure series with a harem. Uh, and it is about a dude that... Um, is expelled from the hero's party. Let me know if you heard that. This is part of the trend of the last couple of years of the expelled from the hero's party story. Uh, people consider to you be worthless, so they expel you. But they've just gotten used to how good you are. Like, most tamers can't tame multiple beasts. This dude can. Things get interesting for him when he meets a cat girl who's like, You're great. Why don't you tame me? Now, he's tamed beasts before and monsters. He's never tamed a demi-human before, but apparently he can. Then he meets a dragon girl and he meets some elves like our spirits, forest spirits. Why can he do that? It's never explained in the manga, but he can. And it's just like a dude that is a nice guy gets even more powerful. And there are a bunch of ladies that think he's great. See, the thing is, Jizzle, it's actually not horny at all. Um, it's not horny, which is to its benefit. I think like none of them are like trying to sleep with him or, or even maybe in love with him. That just, just, it's just about a dude that gets to hang out with a bunch of cool ladies. And then he gets stronger because they get stronger because of the taming contract. And he gets stronger because of the taming contract somehow. And so he's just like a nice guy who's really strong hanging out with a bunch of demi human ladies. And it's not terrible. And I'm going to watch it. And it's one of those shows that I'm like, I can't recommend it. But like, oh, no, it's pretty great. He's got a good heart. I don't know. Um, yeah, they do, it's not horny. Uh, it's weird. It's actually surprising. Um, Studio Perot. Okay, so right now. Uh, let me check. Yeah, right now. Nobody has, nobody knows if Crunchyroll has the rights to this or not. Which is wild. Because there's a rumor that Disney Plus got this. Which seems bizarre. Because Viz has such a good working relationship with Funimation. That you would imagine that Crunchyroll is going to have. They're doing Thousand Year Blood War. It's going to be several seasons of it because it's a long arc. Now, I should point out here, I've done a whole video about how, like, my mixed feelings about this. On the one hand, for diehard fans of this series, the fact that they're going to get the anime adaptation of the, of the rest of the manga is great. But also, I don't think it's good because Bleach suffers from several... 90s anime isms and manga isms um the chosen one and uh too many fucking characters and also too long of a story this is the look an anime adaptation where the manga is done and you don't need filler oh my god they don't have to do any filler they can just condense some really unnecessary long manga chapters of this story I hope they do that. I don't know if they will. Also, it's so wild that they're doing Bleach in 2022. Again, as I... Perot, Studio Perot, good choice um, for it, of course. Excellent choice for it. Probably wouldn't be any other studio. But, like, I don't know about it. I don't know about it. I'm going to watch the first episode, but I could see myself, like, not watching it weekly. Uh, Blue Lock, um, this is a, a sports series about Japan trying to figure out what to do after they uh, lost at the World Cup. Uh, I like everybody's hair, but I don't think I'm going to read, I'm going to watch that. Um, 
uh, Bochi the Rock from Cloverworks. Fuck yeah. Look, do I like music anime? Not particularly like the idol side of it, but I do like uh, we're going to be fucking in a band uh, kind of stories. I think that's great. Um, I think that's neat. Also, Bochi the Rock. And it's Cloverworks. It's going to be a bunch of ladies. Like, I think I'm going to... Oh, it's pretty good manga. That's nice. I think I'm going to... It's a slice of life. Y yeah. Uh, do we know? Okay, nobody's picked this up yet. Uh, I hope someone does. I could see this getting picked up by um, High Dive. Uh, or, or actually, because uh, it's Cloverworks, I could see this being a, a grungy roll. But I, I would watch this in a heartbeat. Chainsaw Man. Um... Chainsaw Man. Mappa is doing Chainsaw Man. Literally the perfect studio for this, right? Like, thank fucking God it's Mappa. Now, Bones, Bones has teams that could pull this shit off. Bones could do a great job with Chainsaw Man. But Mappa is pretty goddamn perfect. Because this could have been, like... This could have been the anime that... This could have been a trigger. Studio Trigger could have gotten this anime. And you could see Trigger doing it. But instead, they're going to do Dungeon Meshi, which is weird, weird choice for them. And Garner... Uh, yeah. yeah uh, which is, you know, good for them. But you could see Trigger doing this and being like... Mm. Um, there are going to be a lot of people that, that are like, I've heard great things about Chainsaw Man. And they watch the first episode and they're like, what the fuck did I just watch? Uh, it's got that like, like Dorodoro let you know, hey, this is going to be a thing. And I think Chainsaw Man, even though it's called Chainsaw Man, I think some people are going to be like, well, I've heard such good things about this uh, manga. I'm going to have to watch the first episode. Uh, I think the first episode is going to be rough. Uh, but yeah, it fucking rules. It's going to be great. Mappa is the perfect choice for it. Um, psych for it. Do it yourself. DIY. This is a, uh, Crunchyroll has picked this up. Um, this is my shit. Whole, oh my God. So if I like Isekai, I love girls doing things, the subgenre. So this is a, this is a club of girls that like craft. This is a DIY crafting club anime and i am so psyched for that shit uh this was like early announcement this was one of the first anime that got announced for this season and i was just like yes this is what i want psyched for it love that stuff uh the, the comedy idol thing about older idols nah i think i'm okay uh so I stopped watching, I stopped reading this manga. I don't know if I'm going to watch this anime. Because um, I don't think it's good. But it's about, it's not an isekai. It's about an adventurer that wants to quit being an adventurer. Because an old friend of his got married. And he's like, I'm wasting my youth. So then he ends up getting roped into being like a, a trainee, a trainer for, um, for, adventurers who are all attractive ladies with their own problems and he gets caught up in their lives and it's very horny and I don't think I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, um, so I'm probably not going to watch it. I don't, I can see this getting picked up. It hasn't been at the time of recording, but I can see this getting picked up. Um, Fujio, uh, Copa de Mine. Um, let's see. What is, what is this? Uh, romantic comedy with also etchy, uh, practice course. Okay. This is, sounds awful. It's a guy stuck with a girl that, oh, there's no way we could pretend to get along. No, that seems awful. No, thanks. Um, Golden Camus, four. 
I am happy for Fred that you are. Look, this show feels like it feels like every season there's a new season. It feels like like not every season, but like every year there's a new season. Um, uh, yes. So this is a uh, Brains Base is doing it right now. Um, I love that it exists. I think sometimes it is too brutal for my sensibilities, and I have. Um, I have kind of trickled off. I think in season two, I was like, I think I'm done here. But I'm glad for people that they get so many goddamn episodes of the show. Uh, and they're getting it so soon. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of not for me. Um, Housing Complex C is only four episodes, it looks like. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's picking this up. Um, I don't know what it is. It's a horror thing. Uh, I think I'm okay. I'm the villainous, so I'm taming the final boss. Yeah, I'm going to watch this. Uh, um, I'm going to watch this. I love the idea of uh, my memories and like, oh, I'm the villainous. And so instead of doing this, I'm going to, because uh, I think it's an isekai. It might not be an isekai. It might be just let, like she knows what happens in this world uh, because she lived it already. It might be a time regression thing. I don't know. But either way. Uh, it is a, it's a fun premise. I like these kind of romance stories. I like fantasy stuff like this. Maybe it's bad. I don't know. Uh, a creature rule has it. I'm going to watch it. I'll let you know. Um, I've somewhat gotten stronger when I improve my farming related skills. Uh, this is another action series that you would assume is an isekai, but it isn't. It is about, um... It's a guy named Al that is incredible. He's so good at farming. He leveled up his farming skills so much that he somehow is incredibly strong. And later in the manga, we find out why. And it's a good explanation. But th that explanation comes very late. Basically, this dude is so good at farming that he is just super strong and also is like not really aware of it. And yeah, it's a harem show, but it's like pretty fun and it's very slice of lifey. And I don't think we're, I don't even know. Um, yes, it's the quiet. It's the, the one I want. I want this to be a slice of life, but it's also an adventure series. Like the main character wants it to be a slice of life, but like they're not stopping it. They're not going to let you. Like the uh, that series about the guy that like got kicked out of the hero's party. So now he's going to live a quiet life in the countryside. But also his sister is still the hero. And like they keep dragging him back in. But that show wants you to think that it's about a, a lovely budding romance. Like the song, the opening and ending theme. It wants you to think it's a romance show. But it's actually an adventure series. This is kind of like that. It's a little more slice of life. But there's plenty of action in this manga. And I like it. Um, uh, more Idolish 7. Um, uh, a long-awaited sequel. Oh, yeah. It's Conde Collection. Yeah. That's coming in November. Um, hey, there. Hey. Hey, here's the Gundam. The Gundam is coming. Um, <laughs> I like that it's a sequel to the prologue. No. Um. Uh, a Witch from Mercury is coming. Uh, Crunchyroll is definitely going to be airing this. This is not going to be High Dive. This is not going to be a Netflix exclusive. This is the surest way to get me to get Netflix is if it is. This is going to be Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll has a licensing deal for um, for merchandise with Bandai. They're going to be putting this out. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's... It's going to be good and sad and good. Um, time to order more kits and sit in the box in the pile. Yeah, my backlog is getting pretty deep. Um, Love Flops is a weird name. Uh, wasn't Iron Blooded Orphans a Netflix exclusive? Uh, it might have been a timed exclusive at the maybe in the beginning. I mean, it's on. I don't. I don't know. I think I watched it on Crunchyroll. But I don't actually have an answer for you, uh, Spike. But I do know that since then, uh, Crunchyroll has had uh, a merchandising licensing deal with them. Uh, yeah, Love Flop sounds like a, a cute nickname for something that you catch. Um, high school student, fortune teller, 
Risqué Encounters. Five Love Confessions. This feels like something that I will never see. You watched it on Funimation when it came out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That might have been. Yeah, it might have been. Um, uh, a story about a neat that I bet we won't get here because it looks very cute. Uh, not in education, employment, or training. A uh, young lady that lives with a dog and three cats. This seems very cute, and I bet nobody picks it up. But it does seem cute. Um, uh, some kind of mecha series, but it's mecha for kids that I have not watched the first season of. Uh, Mob Psycho 100 Season 3. Bones doing its thing. The Mob Psycho Studio working on Bones. Now, at the time of this recording... We, we do not know the status of the dub cast. There have been uh, talks. There was a statement made by the voice actor of Mob, of the dub, uh, that he and major cast members, returning cast members of the dub, have, um, uh, have, um, this is the dub voice actors, they were attempting to make an agreement with Crunchyroll to have the voice talent be a SAG after contract because they're in SAG after and uh, voice over work for movies occasionally is SAG after, but uh, generally, uh, it, but for television shows, they are not. Uh, I'll, I'll let that go in there. Um, um, so um, the voice cast attempted to negotiate, they were met no. Uh, it looks like the, the voice actor of mob for the dub does not believe that he will be returning. This is not a group decision. It is not a walkout. It is not a, we're uh, on all or nothing. Uh, I do not know if negotiations are going to continue. Um, we'll, we'll hear about that. Uh, but that is as of today, that is breaking news pretty much that they uh, attempted to negotiate for a SAG after contract. And the follow-up is that voice actor whose name escapes me at this moment, and I apologize for that, has said, um, look, I'll do it uh, not as a non sag if you agree to meet with sag for future contract negotiations. Um, uh, you know, he did point out this was not a money issue. This was a being in the union issue. Um, which makes sense that get returning cast you're going to offer something like that um yeah and 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 i'm not a dub watcher that much uh i do watch some shows dubbed but i mostly watch subtitled but i am also a person that is i am i'll say this real brief because we're going so long on the stream uh i am not currently in sag after but i have done sag after performances and that and that uh union looks after me um i have done minimal small little things on a couple tv shows i get residuals for my couple lines that i said in one episode of broad city uh it's the teeth episode the, the hallucinations uh, uh bingo um uh i'm the cashier uh if you ever want to go back uh i'm wearing a flannel it's weird uh but i get residuals for that i'm not in sag after because that was a sag after show they look after me um, and so, uh, I am always been a, a pro union person, but specifically sag after again, even though I am not currently a member of that guild, they still, uh, or, you know, uh, union, they still look after me. So, uh, I would love it for animation to, especially simul dub, simul dub voice actors work such terrible hours. Uh, and one would assume that one of the reasons why Funimation kept their in-house studio stuff in uh, Texas was to make it harder for unions uh, to work in Texas. Obviously, a lot of it is done in uh, at, at home, and that also makes it harder to that makes it easier to be like feel like you're not like under their shadow, but it also can be more difficult to reach out to other people. Um, uh, but so yeah. My hope is that gets taken care of. I would love for it. Uh, and for folks that prefer the dubs, I want them to have good voice actors that are uh, getting paid well. And if they want it to be a union contract, to be in the union. Um, uh, there's a Madhouse. Hey, look. Hey, weird. Madhouse is doing a romance show. 
That looks kind of fun. Uh, um, lady that breaks off the engagement looks like. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's a conspiracy. It's a romance. It's a uh, uh, Elizabethan romance with a uh, conspiracy underfoot that Madhouse is doing. I don't. I probably won't watch this, but like, I don't know. That sounds kind of cool. Uh, Move love alter. How are they? I can't explain Move Love Alternative again. I refuse to do it again. This is, it's a mecha series that's also an isekai, that's also a time travel series. And the first episode of season one of Move Love Alternative has nothing to do with the rest of the, it's, it's a tonal episode. None of the characters in that first episode have anything to do with anything. They literally were just like, hey, we're a confusing show. We're um, we're the third visual novel in a weird series that started as a goofy comedy and then became a serious visual novel. Um, and we're the alternative reality of that series. Let's just have a tonal episode to start things off. Man, I don't know. The mechs look cool, but like, I can't believe they're already doing a second season of Move Love Alternative season. Oh, jeez. Uh, My Hair Academia, uh, there's more of it. Things are getting fucking heavy. With Again, things are uh, continue to get heavy. Bones does fantastic work with My Hero. Uh, Deku's figuring out his new powers. You know. We're getting more Pop Team Epic. Uh, we're getting more fucking Pop Team Epic. After the... Uh, and after the people that brought you Pop Team Epic did Gal and Dino, which was so... Gal and Dino is an underrated gem. It 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 uh it, it had to stop production because of COVID in 2020 when everyone was stopping production, production. And then it resumed and it never got its momentum back. Uh, Gal and Dino, half of their episodes are live action and half are animated. And the live action starts as just redoing the animated that you just watched. But then it goes its own direction and feels very pop team epic. And there's like the guy that is the death the death note like character that is also in pop team epic shows up early on into Gal and Dino the live action. It is so weird. There are some episodes that don't work, but most because of mostly because we're dealing with COVID. But uh, Gal and Dino rules and like more pop team epic rules. Um, I'm happy to have it. Even the weird, like, OVA thing that came out was still good. Uh, Raven of the Inner Palace is a mystery series that I don't know anything about. All right. Um, okay, so Reincarnated the Sword is in the sub-subgenre. The Isekai is its own subgenre of, of the adventure series, uh, adventure anime. The subgenre sub subgenre beyond of that is weird weird reincarnations your hot tubs or your your own sense your vending machines your swords your slimes your spiders your i've been reincarnated as a weird thing you would think there wouldn't be enough story about a sentient sword but you don't understand the beauty and the poignancy and the best girlness of Fran the cat girl because Fran is going to be the best girl of 2020 because Fran rules Fran is just like eager and and uh and willing to help people and like a great main character and a great protagonist on her own and also she considers the sword to be her master and 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 that she's a student of the sword. Uh, yes, she was a slave. No, he does not purchase her. He is part of her rescue. Um, and uh, uh, or she's, she's trying try to avoid being a slave. Fran rules and is such a good girl. And the other characters that come in here are, are great. Reincarnated as a Sword is going to be a weird 
show that I don't know if it's going to be popular, but I'm excited about it. Um, yeah. And, and it, and it, yeah. Oh, and sometimes I don't know if they're going to put the eyes on it. Now, the eyes are just for us as the reader uh, of the manga. They, they, sometimes, sometimes the sword has a face um, to give it some expressions. I don't know if they're going to do that in the animation. I think they'll rely on the voice. The voice actor is my guess, but I haven't watched the trailer for this. Uh, so I don't know if they're going to put in the like kind of manga y like cartoony, like let's throw in that. So I don't know. Uh, high Dive picked it up. Makes sense. Good on High Dive. This is a, this is a good High Dive uh, series. Um, I don't know anything about this show. It's based on a video game. It has a lot of ladies in it. Uh, and there are two studios working on it, which sometimes is not a good, um, uh, a good sign, but maybe, um, Shima Rizuku no Tempo Ki, uh, guess you're finally, yeah, Dustin, I think high, look, I think getting the trial for 14 days for high dive is worth it. They're not paying me for that. This is not sponsored, but they have they always have just enough series that I like for me to do it. Like, and that way you can watch the slime series, the uh, My Isekai Life, the 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 uh, the guy Yuji that had all the slimes from last season, which is fun. I mean, you don't have to watch it, but you could. Um, uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, this is a fantasy slice of life. Okay, uh, fantasy world slice of life. Uh. Okay. Uh, it, it looks like it is a girl running a store in a, in, a, in a fantasy world. I mean, if someone picks this up, I'll watch it. I mean, I'll at least watch the first episode. That sounds kind of fun. Um, okay, we got uh, Shinobi. Oh, we got some ninja shit. Oh, we got a ninja and a dude. Okay. Uh, the Crunchyroll's picking this up, huh? All right. Uh, ordinary student. Oh, he was an ordinary student until his life turned upside down. Really? Uh, he's the heir to ninjas. Okay. And there's another clan. Uh, he's got to become a ninja. And he goes to a ninja school. I don't know if I'm going to watch this. Ninja school. Maybe I'll watch ninja school. I don't know, Ninja High School? I don't know, maybe. I might, I don't know. If it's on a day where I'm not watching a lot of things, like Sunday and Monday feel like the days where there's a lot, n never a lot of anime. And so it's like, so I might, I don't know. Um, okay, we got Spy Family Core 2. You know I'm watching the second season of Spy Family because we got a fucking dog this time. Guess what? We got a fucking dog that knows what's up. Literally knows what's going on. Uh, and I won't further talk about that. Uh, but you know I'm going to watch season two of Spy Family. Even more action. More cool shit. Uh, Anya's going to like try to really help things out. Things are building. Um, yes. Spy Family is just like. It's just a good vibe. And you're like hey. Would you want to watch a series about like spies and also a found family? And they'd be like, yeah, all right. There you go. Watch it. Like it's a, it's a pretty easy guess. And the dog is very good. Uh, it's, it's a pretty easy sell. Uh, the Eminence and Shadow. Uh, I have tried to get into this manga several times. Um, it is an isekai, but in this one, uh, Basically, uh, the the uh, occasionally there have been isekais of like the manga I wrote is now real, or the web novel that I was writing is now real. In this case, it's I came up with this like secret society that I'm the the leader of, um, and now I'm in the actual world where it's real, and now I have to be the leader of a secret society that I made up, and it's a kind of an interesting premise. And I like Nexus as a uh, studio, but I didn't like the manga. So I'm going to watch it because I watch every isekai, but I'm probably going to drop it really early. My guess is, I believe this is High Dive, right? 
yeah, I'm guessing I'm going to drop this pretty early on, but I'll give it a, a shot because maybe I'll like it as an anime, even though I didn't like it as a manga. Um, the Human Crazy University. I feel like this is a show that it, oh, Crunchyroll picked this up. I could have. I would have put money on the fact that no one was going to pick up this weird fucking comedy um, about a weird uh, institution about, uh, full of weird people. Uh, yeah, man. I, I'm surprised this is... It's a comedy. Uh, I didn't like the manga. I'm surprised this got picked up. As an anime, I'm surprised Crunchyroll is picking this up. I'll give it a shot, but I, I feel I would feel like meh. Um, Two Year Eternity season two. Very happy for fans of Two Year Eternity. I will not be watching this because it is just fucking sad. It it is a show that introduces people, as I've said, to that for you to care about them so that they can make their lives hell so that you feel worse about your own life. And I just don't need that. Um, ooh, uh, this is coming up pretty soon. Uh, ooh, it's a Tanuki girl. Wants to be human. That sounds fun. Uh, nobody's picked this up. Uh, oh, and more creatures, huh? Okay. All right. Two, two, uh, non-humans trying to be human. Hey, uh, Urusai Yatsura is coming out. What the fuck? Um, it is a new adaptation of the manga. Uh, they're doing a new Yatsura. It's a Yatsura remake in 2020. Hey, I think that Yatsura is really good. David Production is doing it, and they're a good studio. Sometimes they have some... Depends on the team at David. But, like... I wonder if this is going to be an orphan situation, uh, sorcerer stabbing uh, orphan, where it really feels of its time, like they don't update anything. Like, yes, I also want to give, uh, 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 yeah, Rumiko money. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Takahashi, uh, I, w I would like to give uh, them, them some cash right now. Um, but like, I wonder. How that feels into the how this series feels into because like if it's old you can be like well it's old but if it's a 2020 I don't know like orphan felt very weird shaman king still shaman king feels modern and fine except for the snowboarder that feels very of its time uh the, the guy on the fucking snowboard Jesus Christ um and then Fruits Basket felt like perfect. Um, so maybe it will be great. Maybe Yatsura is going to be totally cool. It's weird that it's out. Uh, here is the second season of Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang Out. Um, it, this does not list Crunchyroll, but Crunchyroll's it's very weird. Crunchyroll had a thing of like a video like this next season. And it was like Chainsaw Man and... My Hero Academia and another show and all action, action, action. And also, uh, it's one like not action series was Uzaki Chen wants to hang out season two, or I forget what this means, but it, it's not season two, but it's like whatever. Uh, it's got a symbol, but it's season two of uh, Uzaki Chen wants to hang out. Uh, and it's very funny because one, season one was a Funimation show, was not on Crunchyroll, but you know. Crunchyroll's picking up. So it, it's weird that they haven't listed it, but Crunchyroll is, has picked this up because they're promoting it. Um, Omega. Okay, so it's Omega. So it's uh, Uzaki Chen wants to hang out Omega. Okay. Um, this is a an etchy series because she's the short stack with a lot going on up top. Um, and uh, he occasionally feels very uncomfortable. There's, some in, there's a lot of innuendo in this. A lot of innuendo. And also, uh, they're they're not dating. They should be dating, and everyone knows they should be dating, including like his coworker and his boss, who are like, we love. They love watching this relationship bloom. Uh, they very much enjoy watching uh, them like 
not realize that they're interested in one another. Um, uh, the weird part of this series is uh, he's got like, he loves cats. And there's one part where he's over her house talking about the cat. And the mom misunderstands. The mom thinks that he's interested in her. She's married and the dad is around and she's not like, she's like, this is inappropriate, but she's also like, this is flattering and it's weird and I hate it. And it's the part of the series that I don't like is the part where the mom thinks that the, the, that the friend is interested in her. It's weird. And I don't like that part. Also, there's a whole episode where they just go to a, a town uh, the the hometown of the guy that created Detective Conan. There's a whole episode that's not in the manga that was paid for by that town. They paid this studio to make an episode of this anime where they go and visit this town where that where they celebrate that the guy who made Detective Conan is from there. Uh, and it's it's just it, I mean look, lots of anime is sponsored. And is just out there to tell you about how cool things are. This is incredibly blatant. Like it's an episode that is not in the... There's not a manga chapters about this. They just literally wrote a tourism episode. It's fucking weird. Uh, Vaz Rock the Animation. I bet I won't watch this. I bet you I will not be checking out uh, Vaz Rock the Animation. Uh, welcome to Demon School, Ear McCoon. I don't think I can convince I can convince you to watch this isekai, this comedy isekai. I do not think I can convince you to watch these this show that has like between twenty one and twenty four episodes a season. It is very funny. Irma rules. Uh, 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 Clara, his f friend, rules. All of the characters are great. It is about a human boy that gets sold to like one of the strongest demons in the underworld. Because that guy wants to have a grandchild. Because his rivals and friends have grandchildren. And he feels left out. So he buys a child. But but Irma, Irma has to pretend to be a demon and go to demon school. So he's got to protect his secret and make friends. And there's romance. And it's funny and great. And Irma is a top tier good boy. He's right up there with Deku as a top tier this is a good boy trying to do good in the world. Uh, and he does get powers. He does get some abilities thanks to his grandpa, uh, who is a demon that, that, that bought him from his parents. Um, uh, but it is very fun. There are some episodes that kind of drag. There's a really annoying character that then kind of redeems himself uh, that, I, that I was happy had a bit of a redemption arc. Um, there's a fake... Um, there's an amusement park that's like with a fake Walt Disney that I think is fantastic. Um, also, the girl that is definitely interested in him. Um, there's there's a couple characters that just fucking kick serious ass, and that's great. Uh, I love Welcome to Demon School. Uh, they haven't said that Crunchyroll has it. Crunchyroll will definitely have it because they've had the other seasons. It's fun. The only thing about Irma uh, that I don't like is the opening song. The first two seasons, the opening song have been this kind of like weird rap song by someone or a group that I don't think can rap well. And I didn't, I don't really like their songs. I don't like the OP. Some people do. I don't. Um, uh, this is the fourth season of a show that I have never heard of or seen before about hikers, young ladies that hike. Yeah, Limit Break. Yeah. Yawamushi Pedal. The fifth season of Yawamushi Pedal. A series that, for all, for really, I don't know why it continues. They keep making more of it. I don't quite... Talk about a good boy. A guy who's so excited about going to high school because he's going to meet people in... And he can be in an anime club and talk about anime with people. A thing he never gets to talk about. But he's like, I'm going to join the anime club. But the anime club is closed down because it doesn't have enough members. And he gets kind of like bullied slash tricked into trying out for the uh, the bike club, the bicycle club. 
And it turns out he's really good at it because he used to ride his, he's been riding his bike, an old like granny bike. He's been riding it long distances to go buy anime and merchandise. So he's gotten good at biking and he's got a weird skinny body that's good for biking. Uh, And so he becomes like good at it. And he makes the guys on his team a little nerdier because they're all pretty jockish. Um, and there's like a dude that sucks. There's a there's like a heel, like a fucking asshole, nightmare guy. But also he knows anime. So our dude wants to befriend him so they could talk about anime. And that guy is like, I don't want to be your friend. Get out of here. And it's beautiful. And there's a made up song for an anime This magical girl anime song that comes in throughout the series and comes back in in place of them singing. And you just see these, the seniors in the first season are giant men. They don't look like high school students. And to see them like sing an anime song is so wonderful. I love this series so much. I'm so psyched to have more of it. Can't wait. Uh, And then... Why is there going to be a bonus episode of of the 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 hero that everyone wants to have sex with? Peter Grill. They're going to do an extra episode of that. Cool. Uh, let's see. Um, 24th, 24th anniversary. Hey, why is 24 important? Wait a year. I don't know. Did you care? Cher it. Um, that's a double length. Yikes. Uh, that's a double length. Okay. Uh, no, not a lot of shorts. Looks like this season. That's fine. Uh, we got some movies. Uh, A1's doing a movie. That's fun. Uh, I'm just like sort out our line. They're doing the, the follow-up. They're doing the progressive, which is like the stuff that leads up to bef- the time skip in, the, in, in sort out our line first season. They're basically doing movies of what happened at that time. Yes. Also. Yes, this series is old, and by extension, uh, you might be old. I know I am. Um, Time I Got Reincarnated is a slime. Another Oni survived, and he's mad? I don't know. I mean, I'll watch it eventually when it comes to Crunchyroll, eventually. I'll, I'll watch Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime, the movie, Scarlet Bond. Sure. Uh, sounds good to me. The first slam dunk. Um, it is a movie for slam dunk. Now, if you don't know slam dunk, it is a, it is a, it is the second or third. I can't remember manga ever to be about basketball. And it was so popular, uh, that basketball became a sport in Japan. This is a manga and later an anime that was so good. Was it part of it the fact that they started airing the Dream Team Olympic Games, the era of the Dream Team basketball uh, uh, in Japan? Yes. But this manga and anime was so popular with people that they started turning like some like recreation areas into basketball courts. And then high schools started because youth basketball was just happening. Then there were youth basketball teams at high school and Basketball was popular in Japan because this manga was so good. That shit gets me every time. I love that shit. So I'm excited there's going to be a new movie for Slam Dunk. Um, and then I guess there's going to be a, a one-off episode for the that fucking weird series about the weird girl that likes... Cu- her sister and her sister's friends are dressed in cosplay and it's heartwarming and also creepy but maybe heartwarming I don't know I I don't think I like that series um more bastard is coming uh I don't know what that is here some of this stuff is going to be like Netflix because Netflix like any chart puts Netflix stuff in like a weird category because they never know if it's going to be weekly or not. So they used to put in a weird category. Um, why Netflix is getting other Detective Conan spinoffs, I don't know. But T- Detective Conan continues to exist uh, and doing shit. Uh, I don't know a lot of this stuff here. we got more Galactic Hero uh, movies. 
uh, that's cool. Um, that that harem anime, that harem isekai, uh, has some unaired episodes. They're coming out in the Blu-ray. Excuse me. I imagine they will be horny. Um, uh, this thing got goddamn thing got a uh, got some mini bonus shorts. Uh, Made in Abyss has some like little extras. These are all just probably going to be extras this season. Looks like we're getting a lot of that OVAs and stuff like that. Um, Seven Deadly Sins spinoff for the original creators about the Melodies' son. Okay. Tiger and Bunny 2. Uh, Tiger and Bunny 2 Part 2, I should say. Tiger and Bunny, I remember really liking, and I didn't watch part one of, of Tiger and Bunny 2. I should probably do that. Uh, we're getting another another bonus episode um, of uh, leading into the second season of Tonikawa Over the Moon for You, a show that I did not appreciate when it first aired and then later caught up on it and thought it's actually pretty special. Uh, it's just a goofy romance about young people that got married without really knowing each other and are falling in love as they figure out what it means to be married and it's cute. And there are people that don't want them to be married and people that do. And it's fun. I think it's pretty great. I, I would say Tonikawa over the moon for you is, is awesome. Um, and uh, there is going to be a second season right now. We get a, uh, another bonus episode that airs in November. So I imagine that season two will come out next season next you know in in january that's my guess um technically that was last season matt yes the uh the the movie based on the that one episode of guntum uh i i believe that is true all right so this is the part where i say uh i'm wrapping up this the we're not wrapping up the stream yet but we're wrapping up the recording of the video because it has been almost three hours of a video uh and that's this is now the longest Pat Bears Anime Club ever. So I'm wrapping it up saying, hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, click uh, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. What shows did you love in the summer season? What shows are you looking forward to the most to in the fall? I want to hear what you, especially the fall stuff. What are you most excited about this coming season uh, to make sure that I watch the stuff that you're interested in as well as stuff that I'm interested in? Let me know. And thanks for watching this very long video.